And here we go. <laughs> Welcome once again to all who might be watching, and of course our players as well. This is Legends of the Drowned Isles Campaign 2, The Great Confusion. Starting a little bit late because of the usual technical problems. I should never want to say usual techno problems, but they are. I'm the host and GM. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One, uh, and this is uh, my my weird little world from my weird little mind. Uh, but I'm very happy to be joined by my player, starting on my left with Pat. Yeah, Pat looks for the unmute button. Um, yeah, my name is Pat. I am playing uh, Silas, who is nothing more than an ordinary servant currently. My name is Mahi, and uh, I play Annie, who is uh, currently a purple butterfly. I'm next, and I'm playing Medric, half-orc cleric, who is like, he looks like a phoenix with, with a lot of bling. The bling phoenix. The phoenix yes. <laughs> bling -in. Well, there's a reason why everybody's all dressed up. In fact, I will um, switch us over to our overhead map view, which ordinarily would be... Uh, well, a view of an ongoing sign of, a, of combat or some sort of dire peril. I don't know if dire peril is what happens to you in social situations, but that's exactly what this is. This is the mansion of the Baron and Baroness on Raven's Bluff. The Baron and Baroness of the region have invited numerous people to their home for a costumed ball. Uh, and uh, many, many people have turned up for this uh, this event, uh, bringing uh, guests in some cases and some unexpected surprises as well. And everyone showed up last time in different guises. Uh, in particular, as Medric has indicated, uh, dressed as the Phoenix Champion alongside Melora uh, Cartwright, who I, in the last minute, finally found my notes, was dressed in some sort of tree-shaped pattern with a, 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 a dress made of golden and red leaves to accompany uh, him. Along with uh, Annie came Captain Verendel, dressed in a spectacular silver and white outfit, which hinted at a unicorn-type shape, especially with the mask and a small horn on his head. However, unseen, or maybe uh, only seen as a, uh, a current servant on the second floor, skulking around is Silas, who was not given a direct invitation to the party, but knows that some of the people from his um, clan have been, as Odiga and Athanos Marsh are somewhere within. Party crashing. Party crashing. Well, thankfully, the party hasn't crashed just yet. Uh, people are kind of milling around inside. Uh, one thing that I will mention um, that uh, Annie would have taken note of is uh, a um, particularly well-dressed and almost out-of-place um, out a uh, very, very well-dressed person um, in uh, a very fancy doublet with um, silver inlay and wearing uh, an inordinate number of rings and uh, a few gaudy, uh, although probably court-appropriate, brooches, uh, wearing a mask, which itself is sort of uh, an elaborate silver affair, probably made from actual silver, twisted into place. Uh, with uh, blue um, uh, accents and highlights and gemstones and these yellow and gold ribbons that kind of flow down from the side. Uh, it is ostentatious. It is probably pretty gaudy, especially among this crowd, although it would look very appropriate at court. And in fact, you hear the voice of Oliver Montrose, uh, a, uh, a court adjunct, uh, member of the royal family by a couple of separations um, and has been known to um, travel throughout Escus in particular. Uh, and uh, although no one is announced, each person is kind of treated uh, as their, their portrayal uh, as they come in. 
Um, it's pretty clear that uh, Oliver was expecting some sort of treatment and sort of bids the crowd a firm and hearty uh, uh, welcome uh, as if his presence has just lit up the room. Uh, and on his arm is a, uh, a somewhat uh, tallish woman you're not familiar with, uh, a blonde hair wearing a very simple white mask with yellow lace around the edges of it. It looks elegant. It also looks like it was probably made recently and probably, you know, rushed a little bit. Not for lack of quality, just because it's not that complicated. Uh, and that's who Oliver is attending with. And Annie, you would recognize Oliver's voice. He's one of those people who's, who's always at court complaining about something until eventually he was literally told, you shall have uh, 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 Rome in, uh, in Escus to uh, occupy your considerable talents. It was kind of the last thing you remember of Oliver. Basically Court. shooed him away. Kind of. Didn't want yeah. to deal with him anymore. <laughs> yeah. So you know that for the most part, um, he stayed in Pitajun, which is the largest city in Escus, probably the only one he considers to be a city in Escus, but to see him here in Elthwater trying to fit in or something um, is a little bit uh, surprising. But given that there was a massive party organized in this direction, it could be because of that. Very likely is. But you also know that Oliver would be one of the few people who might be able to pick you out of a crowd. So we begin with sort of the, the gathering point. I mentioned kind of, I believe at the end of last episode, that um, the Baroness and Baron had entered the main chamber, the main ballroom. Uh, people have been milling about. I'm not going to constantly be moving icons for those of you who are looking at home or for my players. What I've done is rather than trying to find individual icons for every single guest that's there, although I think every single guest is actually on the thing somewhere, that was me looking at an impossible task and saying, sure, I'll put everybody on there. Um, but what I have done is labeled them with um, their mask. So while you might not know who, who is each individual person, except for the few that you immediately recognize, um, you will at least see their name uh, or see their mask. So for example, in the main ballroom right now, uh, you see a panther, a wooden duck, a wooden goose, a squid, possibly, uh, a ram, uh, a small jeweled mask, a mask made of seashells, uh, a griffin-shaped mask, and an eagle-shaped mask. And as you talk to people, some of them you will know, some of them you will know only by reputation if you get to know them. Um, so that's kind of how that social interaction is going to go. So I'm not going to constantly be moving them around. There will be occasions where I'll say, okay, we're going to take a moment, time passes, and then I'll reshuffle where people are. You also... Uh, folks will notice, uh, uh, and if you don't see a name underneath an icon, let me know. I think I got everybody, but there were a lot of them there, so I might have missed one or two. For those who are characters who are known to you, I basically put their icon on the map, um, and hopefully for most of them, you'll be able to figure out uh, their mask description by hovering over. I think most of them are there. Um, and there are dark spaces. Those are basically where the doors are closed. Uh, if you go by a place that looks like a door, or if you ask me, is there a door right here where I'm standing? I'll let you know. They're not necessarily forbidden or locked, it's just that you can't see into those spaces, and you're not familiar with the layout of this of this uh, place right yet. Um, one of the doors, for example, already open is the door to the dining room. I've also added labels into each of these rooms, so you have something better to describe them with, as opposed to that one over there to the left of the other thing, um, which is not an uncommon description for me to try to use. So, as we begin the evening, the guests have been arriving, and even after you've kind of been there, the guests have arrived. I'm assuming that people basically on the first floor of Medric and, and, uh, and, uh, uh, Laura? Uh, yeah, Annie, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the two PCs on the first floor, that you've had a chance to at least look around the main, the main, uh, corridor. So you have, that's why they're all revealed there. Uh, and you'll also see, oh, I have to reveal that. There is another room which is actually open on the lower left, which is, uh, I'm just going to find my screen here, um, which is a game room. 
I'm just going to reveal that space as well. And again, if you have any descriptions of a particular space you want to take a look at, or if you would have looked at it in more detail, we can, we can go into more detail about that. Uh, you can make lots of assumptions about what might be in, for example, the toilet area, or the game room area, or the dining room area. Uh, and as I said, the other ones are probably either closed uh, or they may be, uh, they may be locked. Um, but as I said, people have been coming in even after you. So even though um, I believe that uh, uh, Verendel and Annie were coming fashionably, uh, no, sorry, it was Medric and Melora were coming fashionably late. There are still people coming after you. Because um, Melora had to teach me how to dance, I remember. <laughs> right, right, the whole dance. I hope I didn't step on her foot or anything. <laughs> um, she's she's tougher than the average kind of person, and so yeah. while she might limp occasionally, she's hiding it well. Um, but there hasn't been a party like this in a long time, and you get the impression probably that a lot of people were um, taking their time to get ready. Some uh, A lot of different... Uh, Groups are coming in at different times. Some of them clearly had outfits before. Um, some of them, for example, there's a, a few of them that have masks made of metal, and that's not something you rush at the last minute. Most of the rest, however, while they look pretty good, are you know not as elaborate, perhaps, as some of the others. Um, whereas Annie, for it's example... Almost like they planned their cosplays ahead of time. It's like, yeah, it's like there's some... I really should have... Well, there are two cloakrooms to the, to the either side of the foyer, so while they won't officially have uh, a uh, costume repair station there, that would be one of the places <laughs> where the servants would have uh, a thread on hand and and uh, and needles as necessary to kind of put some things back together. As some of the nice. costumes are falling apart a little bit. Uh, most notably, uh, although uh, Silas made a, a number of efforts to try to improve the costumes that Odiga and Athenos had thrown together, particularly Athenos, um, they're still really quite thrown together, um, and it it looks quite obvious how his his shape is is a kind of some indistinct buoy, buoy slash bog monster. I think is how I've listed the the uh, the description. Um, and again, if there's particular people you run into, I can give more detail about them. But first thing that happens is that the Baroness and the Baron enter. The music kind of swells with their entrance playing. Um, there's no no official theme of the barony, but something plays which sounds suitably official. Um, I'll have, uh, well, no, you don't really need to make uh, uh, checks. And I'll return to Silas in a moment and catch you up as well as to what you're discovering upstairs. Uh, but you would hear the increasing noise of people uh, from downstairs. Um because you spent some time kind of scouting around outside as well and uh, and finding a spot to go in. Uh, both uh, Annie and uh, Medric would hear that there's an effort to bring this song to life, but there's also a couple of dissonant chords in there, like they weren't really sure about how the song was going to go, and at a couple of points... Uh, one of the performers seems to go left, and everybody else goes right, and then they finally quickly adjust. So it doesn't have the full polished presentation of something that's done on a regular basis. Um, you, you suspect that the, they don't have a regular band here, so they were hired for the occasion. Silas can't hear it, but he shudders and doesn't know why. <laughs> he, he shudders in indistinct professional rage. Uh but nonetheless, um, it, it does gather all the attention and people squeeze into the ballroom. There are double doors at the end of the foyer and, uh, and the beginning of the ballroom. And so in a certain sense, the two spaces are kind of connected together. Uh, and in fact, um, not everybody makes it into the main ballroom. Uh, some are kind of hanging around the sides or hanging around in the foyer itself. In particular, Oliver doesn't even try to go into the main room. He kind of He has a few people that have been gathering around him. Uh, including the someone who's very obviously Maximus, uh, Ma Maximus Ten uh, Tenteroth, I think his last name is, who is the uh, the owner of the circus, dressed in uh, a very fancy, flashing robes, and he has this big mask of diverse uh, red and purple flowers, or uh, sorry, feathers, which he refers to as a periton's head, 
but he's very clearly still a dragonborn. There, there aren't that many dragonborn that come through this area, uh, and he wants to be identified as Maximus. He's kind of a center of attention, but he's chatting amiably with Oliver. And the Baron and Baroness, uh, there's a bit of an applause that goes up as they come in. And then uh, the, the Baron, who stands quite tall, he's, he's uh, 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 a, an older man, um, not as old as, say, um, Wish or Angus. Angus is much older. I'm getting a warning that I might have some audio glitches, so let me know if I break up at any point. Um but showing signs of, of age. He's one of those people who ages well, but there's still like this little silver bit at the temple. And, and uh, uh, But he shows signs of being having been a very strong man and still probably quite strong. Um, you know, big meaty hands that he speaks with as he, as he uh, and gestures uh, as well. Um, so he dressed, looks a lot better than he did when we first visited this place, right? Vastly different. So okay. when, you, when you were last here, he was barely moving. He was... Uh, practically shivering in place, but didn't seem to be able to, to say anything at all. Uh, but now seems animated and excited. Uh, he's got a, a, a rich, deep voice. Uh, his, uh, his hair and his, uh, he's got like a thin mustache, very, very finely quaffed, very much put together. Um, wearing this, this raven's head, which kind of fits over his own and has this, this long black beak out in front. Um, I have. I have such a raven head in real life. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's true. Yeah. Uh, I know more than one that have one, which is even stranger. Um, dressed in a, in a, in a, a little bit understated, but very finely made um, sort of almost velvet suit um, with a few kind of uh, marks of, of the barony. There's a, a large brooch with itself uh, as a similar image to what is on the floor of the ballroom of a silhouette of a raven. Um, and he, he heartily welcomes people back to the, uh, to the barony. It has been far too long since they've held such a ball. And I'm, I'm not going to necessarily do all the voices that I would normally do. Cause I'm still trying to figure those out myself. Um, but you can imagine this kind of, uh, uh, um, strong, strong voice. Um, and then gestures to the woman beside him in this sort of emerald, um, almost looks like a, a dragon-shaped outfit. What's really strange is where you've got Maximus, who's an actual dragonborn who has a dragon-shaped head and is now covering it with feathers to look like a periton, which is a massive carnivorous bird. Here it's the opposite effect, where it's a very streamlined, simple, uh, simplified, uh, um, overlapping pattern of, of, uh, of what looks like... Uh, dyed shale or something, probably stone. It looks a little bit like it glistens a little bit to make it look like this emerald uh, dragon's head. Uh, and he, he introduces his wife, who is now uh, returned to full health. And, uh, and um, there's a, a lot of cheers and applause that go up from the people around because it's been well known for a long time that the Baroness has been very, very ill. And in fact, when you saw the Baron and Baroness last time, which is been now, I think, a few months ago, the Baroness was not even seen directly. She was in uh, in her bed um, with uh, curtains around. Although her voice was strong, it was still a little bit wavering and a little bit hesitant. Um, and now she comes in to this great applause and bows down to, the, to everyone with a, a flourish uh, and then speaks uh, as well on her own, welcoming every, everyone to this this delightful gala um, in which they, they hope to celebrate the, the end of the recent difficulties and the beginning of a new era of uh, prosperity. Um, they keep their, ship, their, their speeches brief uh, and then uh, kind of start to mingle among the crowd, um, kind of moving from, from place to place. So... A few of the people that are here in the, in the crowd, some of them you already knew were here, some of you didn't. I'm just going to mention a few of them. Um, you do see that Dudek is here. Uh, Dudek did show up. He was invited. You did know that. I think um, um, Silas had been, uh, had been uh, he'd spoken with him. Um, Dudek is wearing a... Where are we here? Um... 
too many pages. There we go. Uh, Dudek is wearing a aquamarine uh, mask. It looks smooth, and it's shaped like a porpoise's head. And what's really strange is as he moves around, it, it's probably just the way that the light is is catching on this very smooth mask, but it almost looks as though it's shimmering a little bit, as if it's being seen underwater. It may also be a magical effect. Uh, Dudek has been around and has many closets in many continents, so may very well have pulled something together for this. Uh, you already know that Odega and Athanos are here. Um, you see a, uh, uh, some, well, no, that would be familiar to Silas. No one else would recognize him. Um, do, 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 do. Just running through the, the list here. Uh, one that uh, both Annie and Medric would recognize uh, because despite, uh, you know, wearing a mask, there's no hiding the, the large muscled shape of Wish Wyndham, uh, the blacksmith. Um, and you can also see, even th by the collars of the semi-formal shirt that he's got, it looks like the only formal shirt that he probably has. Um, but you can see the, 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 the tattoos and the bulging neck muscles from, from the very, uh, very strong uh, uh, smith worker. Uh, and his mask is one of the ones that's made out of metal. It looks very, very crude and like a band of metal that goes across his forehead, and it has uh, slightly larger ridges on, on, the, uh, on the forehead and kind of goes down the side. And to Medric's eyes, it's as much uh, protection as it is decoration. You have a feeling that, how did I put it here? Um, you can probably could take a hammer blow from a giant. <laughs> could take a hammer blow from a giant. Exactly. It is. It is extraordinarily uh, strong, and probably really heavy. And very few people could actually carry off wearing something like that. But to him, it looks effortless. That's how he has neck muscles. <laughs> yeah, this is how he prepares. Um, one of the people that um, you would see, and again, very familiar to you, but very unusual to see and not expected, Angus Frey, the oldest member of the Frey family uh, and the patriarch of the Frey family who run the lighthouse is here. Uh, he looks very much out of place. Um, where uh, Wish has a, a, a nice shirt and a kind of uh, vest to go over it. He looks decently put together, if not fancy. Um, on, the, on the contrast, Angus's clothes all look old and wrinkled and repaired and stitched up. You get the impression that when you see him, though, that the family made an effort. And the mask is remarkable. It's a simple clay mask, but it's been painted. So it's that one side of the mask has this dark blue shading with small yellow dots. The other side goes uh, with half brown on the bottom. And then this, this uh, single peak of white from which a yellow streak crosses across the eyes. And what it immediately makes you reminded of is the lighthouse itself. They have literally put the lighthouse on his mask. Um, he's been staying in the dining room, mostly picking away at their free food, kind of <laughs> staying away from people, uh, not really certain what he's doing there. So he's behaving like a grad student, basically. Uh, yeah, that's, a, that's a fair, <laughs> that's a fair description. Um, and so those are some of the people, um, that you see there. Um, Annie would have noticed Sable kind of standing at the top of the stairs leading up to the upstairs, kind of watching over things. Um, Sable has a, um, where is it here? Sorry about all the front loading of information here. I wanted to get the scene set, but, oh, a Sable's mask is a midnight black with white tears coming out of both, eye, both eyes. Uh, and it's very much in contrast to the ostentatious way that almost everything is done here. Her dress also is similarly fairly simple. Um, you would guess that if she had the choice, it'd be, it would be black, but in fact, it's not black. Um, but it's it's kind of a simple dark blue um, that she's wearing. It's one of those ones that comes with a, a white collar, though, as well. And you can see that she's kind of been standing at the top of the stairs, just sort of watching over the crowd. So there are many others here, of course, and you can choose to interact with anyone before we go upstairs to catch up with Silas, is there anyone in particular or anything or in particular or any place in particular that, uh, starting with Medric, uh, that you want to be or where you want to go? Well, I've been, I've been thinking about what I wanted to do, like, for, well, pretty much 
all along so far because I want to go explore and find out if there's anything still sketchy going on with the Baron and the Baroness, but I also don't want to just ditch Melora. <laughs> so, uh, I'll just be mainly chatting with Melora and bring back the, uh, our adventure in the woods when, uh, what was his name, Say was saying he didn't like the Baron at all. Uh, Gald, I believe you were referring yeah. to. So, uh, if you'll remember, Gald really did not like the Baron. And at, at first sight, uh, I didn't like the Baron much either. And I'll make sure nobody else is hearing this, but he looks a lot healthier now, though, so I don't know if the problems have been resolved or if something's taken them over. Because I'm assuming Melora would be okay to give this information to, because she did see a lot of sketchy shit with us in the woods. So. Yeah, she yeah. was riding. Or she was running the caravan that uh, Ardwin mm -hmm. had uh, had had you guys protecting. Um, and yeah, kind of uh, discussing back and forth uh, with her, she kind of whispers or follows your lead if you're whispering. Um, mm -hmm. I've never actually met the Baron and Baroness in person myself, so I can't really judge them there. My father has um, interesting things to say about them, mostly that he admires the Baron's um, financial dealings uh, and has never, I don't think, met the Baroness before. Although I can see he I've... probably will be now. And I'll, I'll just recount to her what they looked like when we first came in, like a few months ago. The Baroness was... Curtains, or hanging curtains, whatever, you know what I mean. And we couldn't see any of her at all. I managed to catch a glimpse of her hand as I was walking away, and it looked pretty frail and skeletal. Is it skeletal or skeletal? Um, <laughs> it's clearly question. Either is okay. fine. I think either is yeah. fine. <laughs> to I realized tomato, that right. I, I didn't. Uh, uh, um, I didn't actually name um, Arwen on the map. Uh, Arwen is actually there, um, and I'm going to change the name of the item. Uh, oops. If I can... Arwen is Mal Amalora's dad, right? That's right. Okay. Names. Um, and he was listed as small jewels, but now uh, listed as Ardwin. Um, because his mask is is pretty much a very simple, straightforward shaped mask, but it does have inset jewels into it. So it is expensive looking at the very least. And he's the one who cool. has uh, a, uh, a thin young woman uh, whose mask is made of seashells, uh, slightly bluish skin uh, beneath the mask as well. Is it Stella? Uh, you, from this distance, you couldn't tell who it is, but yeah. you can certainly interact with them. Um, and uh, Melora shares sort of your trepidation. Uh, it sounds like she was very, very sick, which is what the, the everybody was told. Um, but she certainly seems better now. I'd love to know yeah. exactly what, uh, how she can become so much more healthy. So would I. Either they had a great healer. Somebody well, I might be able to learn from, or... Or we need to bottle some of from... that and sell it. Yeah, that too. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, like, could I sell healing? Wouldn't you allow that? And anyway, future business opportunity, maybe. The um, <laughs> answer is yes. <laughs> Great. Is it, is Where did old... the map go? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, did I move the map on you? No, no, no. Because uh, it'd bring... Is there a way to, like, lock... The, the GM screen, because otherwise it just shows whoever's talking. Oh, yes. Um, if you go, a little technical aside here, but if you go to view, mm -hmm. um, actually, sorry, if you go up in the upper right hand corner of the image for me, you should be able to pin it. It should stay for you. Alternatively, you can change the view to gallery or. Oh, there we go. Thank you. There you go. Right. But I'll just basically let Melora know that. There is a possibility that shit might go down <laughs> at some point during the evening. Something is strange. <laughs> yeah. And she kind of smiles and, and moves your hand to the small of her back, uh, where you can feel there's a, a metal lump just beneath the uh, the dress. Nice. You Always came prepared, I see. Well, I've been on the road enough times to know never to be unprepared. That's good. Hopefully we won't need it, but 
It's glad to know you're prepared. And then I'll just, I'll just go like make idle chat with Wish, ask how my armor's coming along. <laughs> okay. Because I remember like a long time or a few weeks ago, I commissioned. Uh, well, I asked about details to commission uh, plate armor. Right. Um, oops. Although I don't know if he wants to talk about work while he's in the game room. <laughs> um. So I'll move. I'll just you. briefly say hi. What? I'll move you and Melora over in that direction. Okay. Um, as it looks like. To a certain degree, Wish is just trying to get away from the crowd. You get the impression that despite the fact that he works in a very, very noisy environment, the noise of crowds is a little bit more overwhelming to him. Uh, and he's kind of, he has a drink in hand and is kind of just looking around at things. Uh, and he knows who you are immediately. Um, he's not, he has no idea who Melora is unless you introduce uh, him or she. She doesn't bother to introduce herself. I'm kind of sitting yeah, there observing. Her. Okay. Um, and he will he will uh, kind of raise a glass to her. He, he knows her father mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Um, you can make an insight check on that. All right. I actually have really high insight on this character. So high that I forget what it is. I think it's a nine. Yeah, it is. 27. 27. Wow. Um. Yes, Wish is very familiar with Arwen Cartwright. Uh, and In a while good way he, or a bad way? <laughs> while he says uh, that he, he uh, uh, respects the businessman, you get the feeling that there was probably some either not necessarily bad business or Arwen got some, some better deal than he should have. Um, there's some sort of notion that, uh, that uh, Wish would rather not deal with Arwen Cartwright, but has had to and probably still has to deal with Arwen Cartwright. Um, and you do know. Sorry, that, so I'll drop the issue of Ardwin Cartwright. <laughs> well, you do know that Ardwin is is uh, a, a prominent businessman, yeah. and many of the caravans either carry something for him or are his caravans. Uh, and he does a lot of import export across the uh, the area. In fact, that's why he's here in Aelthwater because it has a very good port, or at least it usually does. It's been disruptive over the last few weeks. Yeah, months. just a tad. <laughs> Threatened to hurt us. What? Also threatened to hurt. Yeah, he also threatened to do hurt us once uh, when we were talking. About, uh, he doesn't seem to be a super nice guy necessarily. Arwen, yeah. Probably not us. Think, yeah, you're you're breaking up quite a bit, Pat. Just so you know. Yeah, it sounds like you're talking underwater, <laughs> which is you know great for being mm. here. It's, it's the echo from the second floor. <laughs> but yes, uh, uh, you're right. Ardwin is, um, it seems to be ruthless, would be one of the ways to put it. Um, we're not sure exactly how that manifests or where it, where it is there, but nonetheless, uh, yes, he's not a wholly nice person necessarily. So as you're chatting with Wish, what is Annie and... Uh, if you're dragging Verindel with you, he certainly will be willing to, but he also does seem to be looking at talking to other people. I'll follow him for, for a bit, basically. Start with that. Okay. Um, if I go near Oliver, I have an ability um, that allows me to mimic um, accents and voices that I've heard for over a minute. Okay. So I'm going to change up my voice just to make it not sound like as much of as me. Okay. All right. Uh, make a performance check with advantage uh, as uh, Verandel does want to kind of make rounds oh, no. in that direction. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. You rolled double ones? That would be impressive. I rolled a one and a three. Ooh, Okay. So nine. <laughs> All right. So tell me what Annie says, which while in a different voice is much more suspicious than she intended. How, how does Annie uh, make a, a bit of a faux pas here that could potentially catch attention that she didn't want? Can you go to Pat and I'll, I'll be back? <laughs> sure, sure. And we'll move uh, uh, Verandel and yourself through. 
Uh, and we'll move, indeed, to the second floor, which means I actually have to meet you guys the second floor. That's what I meant to do. Uh, in which we have quarter of the space revealed so far as Silas has teleported into what appears to be an unoccupied uh, guest room. Um, this guest room is... Someday I'll remember how to get all these done. Okay, this room is the ship room. A well-appointed room decked out in a seafarer's decor. Currently empty, but does contain the model of a ship in a bottle. Uh, looks very fancy. It's, it's about uh, uh, two feet long. It's a very, very large bottle. Uh, as well as sort of a blue and white uh, decor. Uh, and yeah, that's what you see in that room. Okay, uh, Pat is trying to fix the audio thing uh, as he's working. So, um, okay. Um, I had a question for uh, Mark as Jim. Um, would it be okay if, like, when using the book to talk to the others? Would it be possible for him to use to do a chat function and talk to two of us uh, instead of having to do them separately? Uh, since he has different uses of it, um, that way we don't have to go talk to Danny. And then I talk with. Uh, so unfortunately, the audio got really garbled there, so I'm not entirely yeah. sure what you were asking. Um, you do have, I, 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 yeah, I really can't, <laughs> I don't know how to interpret what you said. Um, uh, um yeah, the, uh, slowdown is really kicking in right now, so, <laughs> technical problems we should have like a whole technical problem interlude page which just says singing dancing dying chips sounds like dubstep <laughs> technical <laughs> problem <laughs> uh, yeah it's it's almost entirely frozen at the moment so um we can uh we can go back I, I to i figured another... out what i would would have said Okay, we're just going to switch back to the other uh, Barony page just to give Pat a chance to to uh, actually implement the fixes he was trying to do, hopefully. So what is it that Annie uh, says or does that, that may potentially give her away? I am going to try to tell Varendale that I would like to avoid being near Oliver but I call him by the name that we all call him because he's annoying, which I can't think of a name right now off the top of my head. Um, okay. But but that that would be what she says. I will make a note by Oliver's list in my uh, my book here as he has a terrible court uh, nickname. I'll just make a quick note of that. Um. Instead of so so the flip of the. Instead of hiding that I, I'm someone who he might recognize, I put a spotlight on it. Okay. And we'll just... By uh, calling him a name that nobody else should know here. And uh, indeed, it causes his head to kind of spin around. And uh, he kind of turns uh, very sharply and, and it's hard to tell because of the mask that he's wearing, but you can see the sort of look of disdain from the, the, uh, the non-covered part of his face and the sharp look in his eyes uh, as he kind of spins around. After he was talking to, to Maximus and uh, talking about the show that was produced and how it was quite joyful and, and all of that, but then sort of cuts off mid-sentence and turns around uh, and sees the two of you there, you and uh, Verendel standing beside. Uh, and uh, 
uh, sort of looks down at you. He's a little bit taller than than Annie is. Looks down at you and and uh, excuse me. I think I heard you say, and we'll, we'll figure out what that that name is in time. Uh, what uh, what his nasty name is? Tell me, where did you hear such a detestable term? I heard somebody say it in passing earlier. Um, and kind of flailing a little bit, Varendel's looking back and forth between the two of you and kind of, I will have him roll. Let's see how good his save will be. And it's going to be at disadvantage because, uh, yeah. Um, all right. The scrutiny is already on you. Um, <laughs> I should just realize that I have his sheet somewhere. Here we are. How does he do well with these persuasion checks? Oh, actually, not too too bad. So we'll see if he can manage to do it at disadvantage. Well, oh, that's not good. <laughs> First roll of two is a one. So, um, yeah. Uh, oh, wow. Let's see how Varendel managed to stuff his foot even further into the situation. Um, he's kind of looking between the two of you and realizing that, that Oliver might be recognizing you. Uh, and, uh, 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 yeah. Uh, he speaks up and says rather abruptly, um, we don't use that kind of language around here. It's not appropriate. Uh, I'm sorry for my servant. She, not servant, uh, uh, sister. Uh, she's not used to big parties like this. And he kind of clears his throat. We'll be going now. And kind of grabs you by the hand and starts to drag you away. But it's very obvious that he was lying badly. Yep. And Oliver just sort of watches after the two of them. However, doesn't get much of a chance to say anything as Odiga steps forward and kind of into his line of view as he's kind of watching the two of you walk away and she kind of sweeps in and uh, you kind of maybe look back a little bit and catch this look of... of, of curiosity a little bit of annoyance sort of shift in focus when he looks down at the ghastly form of Odiga in this weird kind of thing you can even smell Odiga's costume as she's moving forward the snake head that she's wearing that may actually be made out of some sort of skinned animal's hide maybe fresher than they intended and slopping, uh, kind of stepping uh, uh, roughly behind her, kind of stepping up as well, is Athanos, but not really enthusiastically, just sort of shuffling forward, um, who's kind of looking around as if, is this what we're supposed to be doing? Fine. Uh, but o uh, Odiga steps forward um, and kind of does a half bow, greetings to you, esteemed lord of the area, and starts on this this pitch that you kind of don't hear very much of because Varendel drags you even further out towards the front of the building. Scary, 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 scary. Pretty much. <laughs> at this point, uh, trying to break eyesight, I think at this point would be the, the angle. So he's literally dragging you around the corner at this point and kind of turns back to you. I'm so sorry. I panicked. I panicked too. It's all good. I... Do you think he noticed... He's got this look on his oh, face. Oh, he uh, probably noticed. <laughs> yeah, the look on 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 Varendel's face is kind of somewhere between, you know, embarrassed. He probably noticed. Maybe he didn't notice. Hope against hope. Maybe he didn't notice, but he really knew to, noticed. Yeah, and he kind of that could have gone better. Who is he to you anyway? You clearly don't want to pay any attention to him. My cousin-ish. 
distant cousin. Do you, He's a pain in the ass, and that's why we kind of shoot him over it this way. Do you think he's here because of you? No, 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 no. We kind of um, sent him to Pitajun to get him out of our hair. Oh, he's one of those <laughs> relatives. Yeah. Make an insight check. Oh, there, there, there's an above a 10. There we go. <laughs> Was Varendel such a person? <laughs> Uh, that's a 14. <laughs> it's a 14? Yeah, there's oh, a bit of pain when he says, oh, it's one of those kind of relatives. And you get the feeling that he knows this from the other side. You uh -oh. know that he was sent here kind of uh, for other reasons as well. You know he comes mm -hmm. from a wealthy family, and maybe that's one of the reasons he was sent out uh, to the furthest edges away from family. He wasn't happy that my mother was the one who got the crown, let's just say. Really? So do you think he's a threat then? Probably not. Oh, it's, it's good to know at least one person isn't somebody I have to worry about. Although probably should avoid talking to him for the rest of my life. Or ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's he's more of a pain because he wanted the crown and part because uh, he just likes to party and was causing problems. So he, he stays in Eskis now. Well, that's hopefully nothing I have to arrest him for. He should be fine. He's harmless, just annoying. Well, that's that's good. Maybe we'll look before we step next time. Yeah, probably a good idea. Um, just to check in on uh, you, Pat. How's your how's your voice sound now? Can you hear me? Not really. It was like Robo mm -hmm. Pat. <laughs> Oh no! Okay. So, I'm just gonna do a restart. Yeah, he's gonna restart. I think we caught that one bit, but uh, that is a, a, a hazard when using any technology. Interlude. Interlude. Well, we we could take uh, a few minutes um, if we wanted to. We just kind of got started. Unless there's unless you guys wanted to jump in again. Or if there's particular people you wanted to talk to. I wanted to talk I mean, to the I'm garden and the at some point, but I feel like I should wait a little bit. I'm good with waiting until Pat gets back so that he gets his moment, so that it's not like we're like basically three turns ahead of him, basically. Yeah, that's fair. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna my, my my cat is doing that thing where she just wants in, and now she's in, and now she wants out, but she stands like in the door frame. <laughs> Stop clicking my mouse. <laughs> Fuck. All right, so we're going to uh, uh, take a brief pause here, and uh, we'll reconnect to the uh, the call and reconnect the stream. Uh, hopefully within about, uh, we'll say, five minutes, uh, and we'll we'll see where we'll go from there. Right. Cat.exe is functioning properly. <laughs> so uh, the stream briefly. And here we go again. Uh, <laughs> sorry about the technical interruption. Um, I promise you we're more sorry about it than you are. Uh, but nonetheless, we are back to operation. And we are going to go to the second floor in which um, skulking around in uh, the upper area, Silas has teleported into an unused uh, guest room, or at least unoccupied guest room, uh, and I believe they called it the ship room, if I was correct, the ship in a bottle. Um, so what would you like to do, Silas? You can hear in the distance the sound of the party, kind of a lot of noise and a little bit of music that seems somewhat dissonant at times. They could have hired a better band. Mm. Um, yeah, sorry. The thing I was trying to ask when everything went kaplooey, um, was, uh, with the book where I can communicate with 
a couple of specific people and it can do it infinitely. Could we say that I could group call the two of them uh, instead of having to group uh, to call one and then call another? Um, I, I think while there are specific abilities to do that, I think that that's, that's an easy call to say, yes, go ahead, just because it does make things simpler. Um, if there's ever sure. a case where it really makes sense that it would that there's a disruption in the communication between one or two of them, then maybe. But uh, rather than having to yep. physically relay everything, I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, so yeah, the last thing he had told them was that he thinks this might be a ritual sacrifice uh, that the Baron and Baroness are trying to pull off. Um, he will send another quick message uh, saying uh, we probably need to find Sable as soon as possible and keep her around so that she's safe with us. I don't think it's safe outside. Um, I mean, we need we wanted to talk with her anyways, but uh, I'll go find her. Because technically, Pat's are on the first floor and uh, whatnot, but uh, Silas doesn't know where she is. Yeah, Silas fact, is going to go listen to the door, uh, listen at the door. Uh, and uh, just for uh, Annie's sake, you did see uh, Sable kind of standing on the stairs, watching over things. She hadn't joined yet, but she was there, not too far away. Um. Can't tell because of the mask, but she didn't seem to have a concerned stance. So uh, Silas goes to stand over by the door and take a listen. Um, go ahead and make a perception check. Act. Uh, I think that's a nine. Yes. I mean, with the the amount of of noise coming from downstairs, and uh, that that every once in a while, when that fool playing the 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 lute just hits that note the wrong way it just it's like nails on a chalkboard and so you find a hard time uh trying to to uh pick out anything else so so he'll try to slowly open the door okay uh and uh take a peek out uh, he it, he does currently look like uh, he's wearing one of the servants' uniforms. So, in fact, I can move the door aside rather than delete it, and you can see the hallway and step out. You can see there's a a, a sconce on the wall just across the uh, hallway from you, lighting up the hall pretty well. You can glance to the left and right. You don't see anybody. Looks like the, the place okay, is fairly okay. well lit. And as you yeah. step out of the hallway, you can see kind of the um, oh, I got to move the eye. That's what I was trying to think of. Why are you, why am I not seeing it? Oh, it's because the viewpoint character is my little eyeball. For those who don't know, I use an icon in space that is a an eyeball, and you can see the uh, the hallway up and up and down. Uh, ignore the overness that you see there. That's actually behind another wall. In fact, I'll move her at the moment so you don't see that. But you can see the hallway <laughs> extends in both directions, probably parallel to the first floor. Uh, you see the yeah. uh, the windows at the uh, far end and the and the bottom part of this map. Just for orientation's sake, um, the top of the map is actually aligned with the bluff, which means it looks out to sea. It looks out westward, yeah. uh, whereas the bottom is eastward towards uh, the forests and inland. Okay, well, um, I guess Silas will basically move up the map just look into hallways and peeking into whatever doors he sees. He's specifically looking for anything that stands out or possibly the, uh, like the main bedroom for the Baron and Baroness. Uh, if he can search their rooms, he'd be happy. Okay. As you're passing by, I'm just put you right there for the moment. That's the stairway yep. stairwell down and you can see the lower floor, um, is quite busy. In fact, from where you are, you should be able to actually make out uh, Sable, who is standing uh, on the stairs across from you, um, wearing, well, yeah, you'd recognize the body shape. Um, it It's 
probably the smallest person that you've seen so far here at all. Um, and then recognize and see the mask that she's wearing is this, this completely, um, midnight black kind of mask with these, these white, uh, stylized teardrops around the bottoms of the eyes. Well, she's actually within 30 feet. She would be. Yep. So, uh, he's going to reach out with his brain and as a sable and, uh, and see she, how she reacts, because he's not certain that she's sable. But. Um, well, you do see the figure uh, kind of turn and look around to try to figure out uh, where the sound is coming from. Uh, and in fact... Uh, if she looks you... his way, he'll just kind of duck down, give a little wave. So he's not super obvious, but if she looks right at him, maybe she'll catch it. Okay. Uh, she seems to move quickly up the stairs and around the corner. And in fact, you can hear her hurried steps as she steps up to right beside you or looking for you, depending on whether you're hiding or not. Uh, but no. then she looks rather surprised because you're not the person she expected to see. You're some servant she doesn't recognize and her face looks uh, puzzled. Well, his face actually looks the same. Okay. Uh, I didn't think to actually change his face yet. So he's just wearing the... Uh... The servant's outfit, but with carrying a, a sack over his back, which is what covers the shield. Okay. Um, Don't we have a bag of holding? Uh, you have a bag of holding, yes. I don't have it. Yeah, you won one from surviving the... the... Oh, oh, yeah, I'm the one carrying it. <laughs> yep. I would have given that to you if you're sneaking stuff in. Uh, well, it turns out there's not much for him to sneak in. I mean, okay. technically, the disguise self covers the shield, um, but uh, I'm just explaining it away as the bag. Okay. Um, yeah, the shield still takes up space, even if they don't see it that way. Yeah. He has to make sure they don't run into it. She does um, double, though, uh, take a double take when she sees you seeing the outfit and then um, kind of pulls back her mask. And uh, you can see clearly that it is Sable. Silas? Is that you? He said, yes. I'm in disguise. And that's when he'll change his face. So he looks a little different, not quite so obviously him. I, what are you doing here? And she kind of looks around a little bit nervously. There's something going on. Yeah. Your there parents is. are up to something. Of course they are. They're not the only ones up to something. And she looks what are point, you up to? She looks pointedly at you. <laughs> yes, I'm... I'm... I'm trying to see what's going on. I think that something very bad might happen. When you say very bad, she starts to talk. And then from down the hallway, you both hear the sound of a door opening, uh, the far, well, the far top of the map and through it steps a, uh, tall, um, uh, probably half elf. You can see there's, there's prominent elven features, but elves and half elves, uh, if a half elf still has a lot of their elven heritage still actually shows a lot of those. Um, it's a, it's a woman with golden hair that kind of, uh, very, uh, straight, uh, sturdy back, very simple, but, uh, but high, uh, high quality clothing steps through uh, and you can hear her speaking to, to, uh, in the door. Now make sure to get your, your rest and try to, um, try to not pay attention to the noises you're hearing downstairs. And she kind of closes the door behind her and then turns and sees Sable um, talking to someone. Sable. Um, and Sable kind of straightens up almost uh, automatically, almost subconsciously, and, and kind of nods, ma'am. Yeah. Um, at that point, uh, Silas, uh, just in a deeper voice, was like, yes, ma'am, uh, as though she was giving him orders. Um, Sable's kind of looking back and forth between the two of you. I was just, yes, yes. The uh, the woman uh, cuts her off. 
You had better make your appearance at the party. Your parents will be very um, disappointed if you're not able to keep up with your social standings. Yes, ma'am. And I know that you have a, um, a soft spot in your heart for those who work at the establishment, but in truth, you should be engaging with a better quality of person. Ouch. And so you, just, she's right, young girl. Uh, you standing this close, it doesn't take an insight check to note the, the sort of stiffness that appears in Sable's back as she's very much not happy with this. Um and it looks like she's going to retort. Are you going to interject other than the, the yes ma'am or No, he just says uh, uh he says uh yes, young miss. You shouldn't be associating with the likes of us. And she throws you a dirty look, which is turned away from the, the woman who was speaking, uh, kind of a, a look of disgust, uh, and then uh, takes, a, takes a breath. Very well. Um, be on your business then, and kind of strides off towards the stairs, once more putting on the mask. Uh, and actually kind of walking all the way to the other end of the hallway and down the stairs, which is unnecessary because you're right by the stairs, but seems yeah. to want to have that stroll away kind of thing. Um, leading, yes, miss. Uh, leaving this uh, uh, woman to kind of walk closer to you. She stands very tall, very elegant, uh, and kind of looks at you. Uh, make an insight check as she comes closer. Now you're seeing a little bit more of her. Natural 20. Natural 20. Hey. Which is uh, is, uh 21. 20. <laughs> so natural 20 for the win. Um, as she moves closer to you and kind of uh, steps into your vision and, and is examining you, there's a couple of things that become apparent right away. One, definitely the haughty attitude that you picked up before. That's clear in, in the way that she stands and the way that she, she looks at you. But it also is very clear to you that it is because it's sort of because she expects this is the way to act. This is the way she's acting, whether it actually pierces into her internal uh, thoughts about who you are or anything doesn't really, it's not really clear, but the very least she, it seems as though she's, she's doing it kind of performatively, but in a very well-practiced way. Mm -hmm. He doesn't look her in the eyes or anything. He just, he does the, uh, the lowly servant thing. Um, as she steps up, though, and it gets a bit closer, you kind of sense a little hesitation and a little worry from her, um, as, as though that there is an underlying worry that she has, but it's unspoken. And she's very good at hiding it, but you happen to catch uh, a, a twinge here and there or something that, that kind of indicated to you that she has some worry. What is your name? Okay. <clears throat> Davin, ma'am. Make a deception roll. Because um, you aren't trying to recreate a particular person, so you basically invented someone. Huh. Uh, I rerolled it because it was cocked. I got a natural 20. That's a 27. <laughs> He's actually good at deception. He's crap had, at insight. I had a feeling he might be. Um, I'm not familiar. You must be new. So many new servants Some... have been brought on for the party. Oh, very well. Be about your business. Yes. When she kind of turns uh, he'll, without... Yeah, he'll just shuffle off down a hallway in a different direction from her. Okay. Um, she turns immediately and kind of steps down that hallway. And you can hear her, her footsteps kind of uh, moving away. Um, and then, ironically, you hear her footsteps getting closer again as you reach this T-junction. And you can hear her footsteps at the far end of the hallway. Are you staying there or do you want to move it on? Hmm. So she didn't go back up to the room, though? She didn't go back to that room, no. Okay, then he'll sneak back up to the room she came out of and take a look. Okay, and you can hear that her footsteps get further and further away. And she seems to travel all the way to the other end of the building. Um, and... You continue to walk up that hallway. You do see uh, doors on your uh, left and right. Um, down here, that's where the door you came through. 
Um, you see another door here on your right, and you see that door at the end of the hallway, and then one door here as well. Um, as you pass that hallway, I will have you make a perception check at disadvantage. Uh, let's see, it's a five, and five is ten. Okay. Uh, just as you're walking along, it's this must be a drafty old building. It's just a little bit of a chill in the back of your, back of your neck. Yeah. Um, let's see. Well, yeah, he's... Uh, yeah. Just checking. Is, he has... Uh, Pass without trace still on, but I'm not sure how long that lasts. Uh, where's that? And that only works really if you're actively hiding. If you're just standing out in the hallway, it's not really hiding. Yeah, yeah. No, it just uh, makes things a little shadowy. Oh, that's not that cheap. Anyways, um, yeah, he's going to cautiously listen as he's going back past the closed doors, but he's he's going to the one she came out of. Okay. It's the more interesting at um, the moment. Make a perception check. Nine. Okay. Thick, solid door on, on each of the sides. Don't hear anything. You imagine that if there's anybody, they're probably in the other parts of the building. The party is attracting a lot of attention That's after all. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's going to try to uh, slowly and quietly open the door. Okay. Uh, it opens without any real effort. Okay, and he's not going to turn any lights on or anything. He's just taking a look around with his dark vision to see what's in there. Unless lights are already on, of course. Um, no lights are on at the moment. But uh, so it's a dim corridor. It looks like a, you know, I, I had to simplify when I built these maps, but uh, it looks like a, a simple uh, interior corridor. The walls are a little bit different inside here than they were in the regular hallway. In the regular hallway, they were uh, beautiful, dark stained wood. This little wood looks a little bit uh, uh, a lighter stain, um, painted rather than stained, actually, in most cases. Um, looks like it's painted in uh, bright colors, actually. Looks like yellow and, and, mm. uh, and orange and green. Different patterns. So it's just a section of hallway? Looks like it. You can see a door off okay. to your right immediately, a door off to the end of the hallway. Well, he will check the one to the right first and if there's nothing of interest there go to the end and check that okay it's not locked do you want to open it up yep okay you open up that door and you see a small bedroom looks as though it is uh uh now it's, it's sparse in the drawing again but actually not as sparse um, you see a, a small bookshelf a, a table with some uh, papers there. there's a stack of uh, what look like uh, journals and some writing supplies. Um, there are uh, on the wall um, different uh, 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 framed uh, paintings that are there. They look kind of simplistic. Um, one of the, the both the major paintings that are there look like they're askew slightly. Uh, the bed looks like it was uh, used recently. You see um, a small wardrobe full of clothing. Any people in there? No people, no. Okay. Uh, then as he walks in, uh, mask of many faces to look like the lady that uh, he just saw. Okay. Uh, and then he's he's going to do just a quick search, like look at what the names of the book, the journals are, or uh, take a quick look at the papers, just see if anything just jumps out at him as this is something of interest. Okay. Uh, make an investigation check just to make it uh, kind of formal. Uh, let's 
17. 17. Uh, it becomes quickly apparent uh, that the clothing size and the range of dresses, as well as a few not dresses typed, uh, put in the back of the cabinet, it's Sable's size. And indeed, when you flip open one of the journals, uh, you do see on the front cover, uh, being the memories of Sable Harquin, uh, aged nine, and then there's another one for aged ten. And yeah. So this is Sable's bedroom, clearly. Okay, he'll put things back as he found it, and then uh, head out to the uh, to the other end of the hallway. Well, uh, as you are moving, you hear the door a door at the end of the hallway open up uh, somewhat, and you see two young curious faces standing in the doorway as you kind of step out. Um, you see a young boy uh, about the age of, uh, ooh, where'd he go? I believe he's five. A little bit younger than um, Silas's son, I believe. Uh, or how old I think is so. He might be a little older. I think uh, Silas's son is only about four or five. Okay, a little older than, than Silas's son, then. Uh, dark, dark hair, kind of. Um, broad eyes, very curious about what's going on. Uh, and a, uh, a girl a little bit older than that, uh, again, kind of a darkish uh, colored hair. Uh, both of them are dressed in their, their bed clothes. Uh, and uh, you see the wide eyes of the one out front kind of looking up at you. Sorry, ma'am. Just had to ask Florentina a question. Sorry. I'm going to bed now. And he seems a little bit nervous and also a little bit defiant at the same time. Uh, Silas will straighten up slightly uh, and get, uh, give the kid a parental, you get back to bed, young man, kind of look, but without saying anything, because it's, uh, I, I'm not certain how high uh, Silas's voice can get. Um, and the young boy actually walks straight up to you. I've got to go to the washroom. Uh, again, wordlessly, Silas kind of looking like the blonde lady kind of gives a and a slump of the shoulders. Um, and does he see anything that might look like a bathroom door in this section of hallway? Um, uh, not from where you're standing, but, uh, uh, you did pass some doors, uh, in the other hall or did see some doors in the other hallway. And it does look like the boy wants to walk right through you, like mm -hmm. wants to walk in that direction. Uh, I will have you make a deception check, however, uh, with okay. advantage because of the, uh, the, the fancy faces. Well, the natural 20 is better than the eight. So, <laughs> wow. Another natural 20. Holy crap. Uh, yeah. Die is doing well. Um, oh. Yeah, he'll he'll basically just sort of shrugging one uh, one armed motion towards the door. Let's go. Okay. And as they uh, pass you, the young boy uh, grabs your hand in a way not entirely unlike what Nikki would uh, do mm -hmm. uh, when he's feeling a little bit nervous, uh, and then kind of drags you down the hallway uh, behind him as he proceeds to move just around the corner to another spot uh, and then pops into the door. Uh, it's okay. Silas has done this before. And you can hear him kind of nervously, you hear him whistling a little bit. It's kind of tuneless and uh, maybe not yet uh, going to be uh, all that uh, uh, great a troubadour just yet. Uh, but it definitely sounds nervous. Um. And uh, he calls out through the door. Um, oh, where'd the name go? Miss Andomir? I'm nervous. I, I can't go. Can, 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 can you tell me a story or something? Okay. Well, in his best performance attempt at a uh, higher voice um 
Silas will sing, uh, actually, Silas will make up on the spot and sing a, uh, um, crap, a, uh, like a, a fable of the Phoenix champion bringing light to the world. Mark is like, I'm going to get him to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I will say that as you look down the hallway, you see a similar door um, to this one um, on the the bottom side there. You also see a large set of fancy double doors on what would be the, uh, if you will, mm. northern part of this hallway. Okay. Uh, I'll have you make a performance check. Yep. Uh, at disadvantage, because you're also trying to em em emulate someone else at the same time, so it's out of your normal skill. Sure. Let's see, that's an eight. That's a four. Four plus eleven is fifteen. Okay. So this this uh, what's the tone of this uh, song about the Phoenix Champion? Is it a rousing to a tale or an exciting tale or a um kind of one of those happy fables, kind of jaunty but not too exciting. Okay. Uh, just kind of reassuring. And uh, sure enough, within a few uh, a few uh, notes, uh, you do kind of hear because in the quiet of mm -hmm. night, in uh, in stone bathrooms and so forth, there is the, the, the resonant sound of, of relief as well as followed by a a rather uh, bright sigh. Oh, jeez! Uh, thanks, Miss Andamir comes back out. I've never heard you sing so well. I don't know that song. Are you going to teach it to us? Mm-hmm. Good. Maybe it'll keep the, <laughs> the scary things away then. And he kind of grabs your hand and kind of pulls you with him as he goes back. Um, okay. Yeah, he'll... Uh, Silas will walk back with him, make sure they both get back to, the, to their room. And in fact, uh, as you kind of round the corner you see the door close uh florentina was kind of watching from the the ha hallway but as soon as i see you come back in uh closes her door um and uh the boy looks back to you uh, thanks ma'am i hope the dreams stay away this time be careful though i think the shadows are moving and he kind of closes the door and then walks around the corner to a second door which closes now, um, does uh, does Silas know if those are more of the Baron and Baroness's kids, or did he only know about Sable? Um, you know, there are more of the Baron's kids. Okay, um, and these are probably I think there are four. There are three kids in total. Three kids. Okay, uh, so those would be the other. Two. Those should. It's un. It's unlikely that they have other kids that are here. Yeah. And unlikely that they have other kids who have an own, their own personal attendant. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, as he goes, he'll head around the corner towards where you said those big double doors were. Okay. And as he does so, he'll change back to a servant outfit, but with a different face, different hair. Okay. And I'm, I suppose I can move some other doors of the way that you are not surprised to find out that there are two toilet doors right there. Not surprised. Anymore. Yay for toilets. This is how I design my, my, my fantasy buildings. They have to have toilets. I want it to be reasonable in some case. Um, and you stand before these, these two large solid uh, oak doors they seem to have a, a, a beautiful relief carved onto the surface of them. Uh, it looks as though one one large uh, raven uh, and then a flock of ravens coming behind it, flying over a beautiful hillside. Um, old, old doors, um, but they seem to be um, solid. Okay. He'll gently try the doors but I assume it's probably going to be locked. It's very easy to assume that, um, and they are indeed very heavily locked. The okay. doors barely even move when you try them. Um, uh, 
Um, okay. Well, um, would Annie have taken those high quality tinker tools with her or would she have left them with Silas? Because he normally has them during downtime stuff. But would I wouldn't she have, have brought... them with me, no, because okay. I'm, I'm in a ball gown. Yeah. I have okay. a dagger on my thigh and that's it. <laughs> okay, then Silas is going to pull them out and attempt to uh, open the lock. Okay, I'm going to say that's going to take some time. We'll come back to the yep. roll. Uh, no problem. But we'll spend some time with the other two folks downstairs who are being entertained by a vast number of people in this space. Just recently, of course, um, Verandel and Annie decided to embarrass themselves, uh, maybe an intentionally <laughs> decision. Uh, so we'll start... Totally intentional, planned it. <laughs> we'll start back up with Medric. Medric and Melora are talking to Wish in the game room. Um, Wish is more milling about, but he do does ask if you want to play a card game. He's if you, you get the impression he's asking as much out of well, we're here. I suppose this is what we're supposed to do, but he doesn't seem terribly enthusiastic about it. Melora looks to you, Medric, as to what happens next. Ah, uh, sure, we can play a card game. Uh, do I even know how to play cards on this character? So you, you sit down at the table. I, I was mainly just gonna like shoot like. Just be shooting the shit with Wish and hopefully drop hints about how is that armor coming along. Okay. Um, what about a suitable uh, make hints roll? Let's see here. <laughs> uh, how about a persuasion roll for being for being subtle and smooth about it as you're sitting there and, and uh, chatting about that? And this is basically... Uh, uh, you trying to lead the conversation to the directions you want. I know you've mentioned the else that you would like to know, especially with the 19. That's a pretty good role. 19. Um, yeah, like I'd like to kind of pry into what happened between uh, him and uh, Arduin Cartwright, although that might be kind of awkward with Miss Sutter's like right next to me. Yeah, let's cancel that. <laughs> um, well, first of all, on the armor. I, I'd um, like, like, how did you get, how did you get the invite here? Like, Okay. Um, well, in the first part on the armor, he... Uh, he does apologize mm. because uh, things have been very strange lately. Um, I've had more reconstruction work, necessary things, a few parts for ships, that sort of thing. But I am working on it. Uh, it'll take a little longer is all. Oh, no worries. I want to make sure that it's suitable for someone of your um, stature. I can't make it quite as fancy or pretty as that. He almost, you get this impression that he almost says dress <laughs> when referring to your outfit. Because <laughs> it is kind of a little bit less formal or less uh, efficient than perhaps yeah. uh, you'd normally be wearing. Uh, but it turns into uh, that outfit. I, I can't do that level of, of fanciness necessarily. Not oh, with extra time. I didn't do this myself. Uh, Melora, I think, did your father get this commission for me or did you get it commissioned for me? Um. I had a hand in making sure it was made, as I did with my own dress. You, you look yeah. fine. You look great. Uh, I'm not saying that it's not great. And you could get the yeah, but uh, it looks wishes. absolutely great for a party like this. But uh, it's not exactly something I'd like to be wearing in battle. <laughs> yeah. And you get the impression that Wish is partially uncomfortable because Melora is there, uh, because oh, okay. he keeps looking over and kind of uh, second guessing and and uh, and cutting himself off every once in a while. Um, but uh, I understand things that are a little more practical, and he kind of wraps his knuckles on the solid metal uh, mask yeah. that he's wearing. <laughs> this thing is far more efficient for most other uses, but um, uh, I can make something for you. I'll, I'll finish it then soon. Uh, and Melora no uh, kind of clears her throat. If you'll excuse me, I... I think I need some refreshments. Can I get you something? And first asks Medric, and then also Wish. Uh, you do see that in the corner of the room, there's actually a bit of a bar set up there mm -hmm. um, with uh, brown liqueurs of some kind. Uh, but she looks like she's tr she's going to head out. Okay. I take the hint. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, in, in fact, 
player question. What's a graceful way to exit a conversation? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, GM answer. Damn, if I know. Uh, I usually just like, yep, yeah, mm -hmm, until they go. <laughs> well, and in fact, but, uh, and in fact, it looks like Melora is just looking for her own way out, and she kind of asks okay. you when you acknowledge, yes, I'd like to have something. She doesn't wait to to, to hear what you want. <laughs> she says you're going to get something. Uh, wish it's going to be tequila. Everything is tequila. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wish though, more, uh, yeah, I'll, fo I'll follow a, her lead. <laughs> more of a, yeah. she is noticing that he is awkward because she is there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you can and I'm also noticing it because inside. So I'll just uh, bid him farewell, and it's like say no rational pressure, just do what you have to. I just wanted to see what the progress was, and I will well, wish follow Melora. Staying. Wish is staying, and Melora okay. is leaving, and and Melora yeah. kind of when you start to stand up says, no, 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 I'll come, I'll come bring it back to you. All right. Uh, and when she asks Wish, he just sort of declines with a nod of his head and a wave of his hand. And she turns swiftly and leaves, leaving the two of you alone to talk. So uh, that was awkward. I don't know what you see in her, and I, I hope it's not the same thing I see in her father. But uh, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not one to butt into your affairs. Sorry. Oh, you're not butting at all. And I just needed an invite to the party and... Ha. Huh. She had the invite. Yeah. I was surprised to receive one myself. I have huh. no qualms with the, the Baron or Baroness, but well, I'm me. I do my work. I do hard work. I do good work. Yeah. I don't really fit in here. Oh, me either. Uh, did, did you see this outfit? I mean, it, it looks cool, but it's functionally useless. Well, I'm pretty sure that with all the guards I saw running around outside, there's, there's no worries I need to be too functional about anything here. Mm -hmm. Besides, uh, if I need to headbutt somebody, I'm ready. Yeah, that thing looked like it could take a hammer swing from a giant. Mm. But it's... So who sent the invite? Well, someone in fancy clothes showed up to my door and said I was to attend. So I'm here. I... I guess it was an invite, technically, but I took it as more of a demand. Is that person here today, or right now? Well, one of the servants. Okay. Because uh, we have reasons to believe, uh, well, me and my friends, anyway, that something is something bad might happen tonight, which is why I needed an invite to the party and why Malara just and, miraculously invited me. And he looks quite concerned. Also, not. Also, not a word of this to anybody else. He looks quite concerned and kind of, uh, uh, you know, the brow furrows even behind the, the heavy mask. Uh, and he's kind of gripping his heart, cards rather tightly. What do you mean something might happen? Like what? I don't know yet. It's, 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 it's just a hunch. I mean, but uh, you, you have to admit a lot of weird things have been happening around town in the last few months. Well, yes. The Baroness was the Baroness was ill, and she's all better. How did that happen? Well, I imagine in the normal way. Maybe she sent for a different. And you hear, you you feel him about to say a word, and then he pauses, looks at you, and a little <laughs> bit embarrassed. Um, maybe a different healer. Yeah, I'd like to know. I'd like to have a conversation with her at some point. I just don't want it to be awkward. Well, I'll do my best anyway, but... Yeah, I... I said hello. If I don't have to say anything else for the rest of the night, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'll comment on her progress or her health recovery progress, I mean. Okay. Um, the response you get from Wish is mostly that it's, it's, it's more like gossip to him and he doesn't really play in gossip. Yeah. She was sick, she got better, he doesn't really think much of it. Um... It's it's more of in you know he was surprised to get an invite to be here, but he supposed that was you know maybe a mark of uh, that he's impressed a few people or that word is spreading of the of the work that he does or um, no one has told him anything any reason why he's here, um, so he's not really questioning it too much. He is surprised that you didn't get an invite when you mentioned that yeah. he got it through Melora. Uh, maybe she just needs more time to warm up to you. Uh, I mean, to to 
<laughs> feel more comfortable. I don't know how well she got along with the previous um, flame keeper, but I'm sure she'll be fine in time. I, I suppose. Come to think of it, it's kind of strange the flame keeper didn't cure her when she had a chance. I thought you, uh, yeah. you godly types, are supposed to be able to do that. A uh, player to GM question: Cure uh, the Baroness, or yeah, that's what he's referring to. Okay. okay, I wasn't sure if I was like the Baroness or my lord. I was like, wait, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I offered to cure her the last time I was here, but she declined. Huh. I, I think I did anyway. Player remembering. It seems Loading. Like a, seems like a like, likely thing that you would have said yeah. uh, or offered. But yes, they, uh, she would have declined. Well, maybe she has something against you um, fire breathers then. I don't know. Yeah. Well, hopefully the rest of the evening goes well enough. <laughs> as for me, so long as the fireball comes up tomorrow morning, warming things up, so, much, so far as the, the water comes down, washing things off, so far as the ground gives good metals as far as all that i pay much pay little attention to the gods and they seem to pay a little attention to me and i'm i'm fine with that now my uh my son-in-law's another question son-in-law silas yeah he is a good person is he though not sure he is he hasn't betrayed us yet Hopefully not ever. <laughs> he and his folks have and, uh, some strange ideas that I'm not comfortable with. And yeah, I, miss, I know how you feel. I miss my daughter greatly. You don't know anything more. You, you, you're friends with him. You don't know anything more about what happened to my daughter, do you? Uh, he mentioned that there was an accident at sea and she never came back. He has, for some reason, he thinks... Uh, player question to Pat... The fact that uh, Silas's wife might still be alive, or that he's searching for her, is that something I know, or is that something we know? Or uh, yeah, he would have let you guys know. Uh, I mean, you guys probably know that maybe that's not something you tell most people because most people don't really seem in tune with the whole bringing the dead back to life thing or finding them or whatever is going on. But if she's still alive. And not dead. I mean, it, as it, in not getting resurrected. <laughs> in your current discussions with Wish, it's clear that he does not believe that she is alive, that she is completely gone. So you can deal okay. with that with however you will. But at least from his perspective, he's not heard about the idea that she might be alive or isn't, isn't betraying that. Okay. Stop it. Cat. Is it cat? Yeah, what, what did he ask you? Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess the Barony employs cats too keep about the mouse population down uh yeah he's he's basically asking if you've heard um silas explain the better he had heard the story the official story about that she was lost at sea um, but she was lost among his people and they didn't they didn't really like them they never really took a proper shine to molly anyway not that yeah. I saw. Yeah, the loss has affected Silas as well. He's, I'm not sure if he'll ever be successful, but he's still looking for her. Yeah, where are we all? He's got a rather, rather cute grandson of mine now. Do you think that yeah. he's safe with Silas's people? Well, Silas cares about him greatly, that I'm sure of. His people, I think I've seen some of them at this party tonight, actually. I don't know them well enough to know for sure, but hmm. nothing's well, happened so far. Let they me guess. Be okay. The big pile. They'd have of, to answer Silas. The big pile hmm? of nets and the, the one with a snake on her head. Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and he kind of goes over to the side of the room where there is this small bar set up, and he pour, pours himself a, uh, a shot of some sort of brown liquid, uh, takes a drink. Maybe I should go talk to them myself. If you wish, I just preferably avoid a fight breaking out. <laughs> I never start a fight. You only finish them. <laughs> he kind of winks at you. You've heard yeah. it. <laughs> well, and, nice chatting with you. And with that, uh, he's kind of steps up towards the door just as Melora comes back to the door with uh, what looks like some sort of champagne glass with something in it. Uh, and there's that awkward uh, in out as they kind of dance around the door and he steps around her Oops. Uh, and uh, steps out from the room. She kind of sits down and hands you this glass. Actually, she sets it down in front of, in front of you on the, ta on the table. Uh, and Thank you. And then kind of puts her hand it. It's terrible. Oh, who mixed that? I'm assuming it's one of the bar people or... And she kind of sets her hand on the table. I have no idea, but it's awful. Absolutely awful. I'll take a small sip of it. Okay. Constitution saving throw, please. Oh, fuck. Ah, no, I... I not help. Roll. Constitution is fairly high, I think. Plus two. And do Only you have, a small sip. Do you have... Uh, Ten. Uh, uh, is that one of your class ones? Your... Or is it just no. your uh, bonus? No. Okay. Ten. Ten? The moment it touches your lips, uh, you feel the, 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 the need to, to retch and kind of turn aside and involuntarily spew out this liquid across the cards on the card table. I told you. Gross. And it wasn't just awful. It was bitter and pungent and gritty and didn't taste like alcohol. It tasted like pond water or the scum that comes at the top of when you're making, when you're curing leather. It was vile. This tastes like pond scum. Where did you get this? I know, right? I'm assuming they have a pond somewhere on the, st on the property. Was it just me, or did everything have this like rotten, pondy smell as we came in? Um, make an insight check. Inside. 17. 17. She kind of uh, uh, looks you in the eyes, then looks away and says, I didn't notice. And you get a bit of a blush around the edges of her mask. Um... She probably was paying attention to something else. Meanwhile, from one embarrassment to another, let's go over to Verandel and Annie. Do you think it's better that we split up or continue to look around this place? I need to go find Sable, I think. Silas said that she was on her, on her way down. All right. I'll um, go talk to a few people around here then. Meet back in the main room? Sure. Uh, I'll save a dance for you. I mean, not that you have to... I'm not implying that you need to dance. I just... I, I, I wink and walk away. <laughs> right. And he kind of strides quickly off down the hallway as you wander back out to the foyer. And you can indeed see Sable coming down the stairs now. Um... In front of you, you see, um, well, actually, they would have moved over here. Um, the one dressed in the peacock feathers and the one in the white swan outfit, um, kind of looking towards uh, Sable. Uh, let's make sure that I get the right ones here. Uh, yes. Um, kind of striding along. The peacock is leading a particular, it's a, a man uh, in the peacock and the white swan is a rather tall, slender, but uh, strongly um, um, uh, well-toned muscles uh, underneath the dress and kind of walking over to intercept Sable who's coming down the stairs. Clearly, whoever it is has recognized Sable uh, and is sort of uh, angling in that direction. 
Um, in front of you, directly in front of you, you see Odega um, talking with Athanos, or sorry, talking with uh, Oliver. And Odega is loud and proud, weirdly, kind of this this sort of uh, this sort of uh, vociferous uh, representation about uh, the strength of uh, of what they've seen in Aelthvader and how her community can really help this place. Uh, grow beyond its current uh, tawdry limits. And it's one of those speeches which is meant to be how great we are and how much we contribute here, but it's coming across to you a little bit like this place is pitiful and we're going to be much better for it for being here. And once we once we uh, move and integrate more with the town... And the weird thing is, from Oliver's point of view, there's two reactions you can see right away. Uh, one is he's nodding along politely... Mm-hmm. And but the other one is sort of this, uh, uh, this look of of who is this person, and why are they still talking to me? So this is the most awkward party, <laughs> and I'm here like have a taste of your own medicine, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Um, I'm going to, uh, kind of swish around Odega and try to swish myself between here. I, I actually, no, I'm, I'll go around, like, the long way, like, okay. that. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a, there's an awkward moment when you meet Wish in the hallway and he's kind of, like, sidestepping you and he's, you, you just hear this frank, uh, this, this, uh, frustrated, uh, voice of Wish as you, as you, uh. Uh, as you pass by, as you're kind of in the, in the distance, you hear this every damn time they build this place too small to be properly. <laughs> and it feels like he might have had that experience just a moment ago trying <laughs> to uh, avoid someone. Uh, make a perception check at this advantage, please. Yep, you're muted here, so. Uh, double 19s. Holy moly. Uh, so that is a dirty 20. Wow, okay. Uh, as you move up the hey, hallway... Hey, I went from, from rolling like below five, double below five. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, yeah, the one and the three. <laughs> so this is the, the balance. Okay. As you move up the hallway, um, you're uh, kind of, of uh, again, out of, out of the whirlwind of passing by Wish and kind of moving back and forth. Um, you feel it happening again, and you kind of instinctively move over to one side of the hallway. But when you look, uh, there is nothing there. But you could have swore you felt something there just a moment ago. Uh, apologies for those who might be watching the stream or the video. I did not have the game room on the screen, uh, and so they, you know, you couldn't see all the exciting action that was happening from two to- from three talking heads in a room off off screen. Um, but you can easily kind of sneak around, and you you hear uh, the voice of uh, the, the the peacock, um, kind of uh, speaking towards Sable, um, uh, graciously. Uh, good evening, young ma- young uh, madam. It's good to see you up and about. I haven't seen you in town for a while. Perhaps some of my entertainments. Uh, would be better suited for you, or I can send people here to the house. I understand you have a good voice of your own that you might want to use at some point. He sounds very slick and salesmanly. Uh, and Sable's kind of frowning. Um, and looking behind her, oddly enough, too, and looking up the stairs every once in a while, kind of half noticing this person assaulting her. Um, kind of steps forward a little bit. Uh, seeing you there because you're not hiding Um, um, maybe some other time uh, Caden I will um, I'll put in a good word with you with my mother and you see the delight kind of smile underneath the peacock's mask oh that would be wonderful excuse me and uh, the peacock drags the white swan uh, over toward uh over toward in the other direction, and you see Oliver step into the peacock's path, a step away from Odega to kind of break the contact. 
uh, who is Odega is still talking, but sees him move away, and Maximus kind of steps in a little bit closer, uh, as as he seems to be uh, kind of interested in her talents, uh, and she seems disappointed. But Oliver successfully dodged that, uh, and Sable pull, pulls you aside. I just spoke with Silas. She says in a in a in a low voice. Yes, he he told me. Oh, <laughs> all right then. Something. What he he didn't say what he thought was going to happen here, other than it was. I don't know. Actually, what did <laughs> sorry? What did uh, Silas say? I'm trying to remember because you said it a couple of times, and I'm forgetting whether you told her about the ritual suicide or whatever the hell it was, ritual sacrifice. If that's something you told oh, her. What he told. Uh, what he Sable. told um, Sable. Um. Uh, I think he did say that he thought something was going to happen here and that I think he did men say that he thought there might be a, like some sort of sacrifice or, or no, he probably said the ritual. I don't know if he told sacrifice, but he did say something. Yeah. Okay. So he probably so, just told her he thought there was going to be a ritual. Uh, Sable would have relayed that then uh, basically saying, you know, is this, do you really think this is going to happen? By the people who are here, they're not people I'd expect to be invited to such an event. And there was a strange fog around the, the place. Well, I know that from what I overheard, it's meant to be a, um, a get-to-know-you sort of affair. Relations between... The town and the barony have been strained as of late. What with my mother's illness, and there's a weird sort of pause around the word mother. But um, as for the fog, that's perfectly normal. You can make an insight check on that if you'd like. Seventeen. Seventeen. Um, she said that with a lot more confidence than you might have expected for a, such a strange fog. And the feeling of death as well. There's a look in the eyes, which is the only part of her face that you can actually see. The, the mouth itself is completely covered over. Uh, there's a look in her eyes of... of uh, Weirdly, in that moment, almost giddiness, maybe? I'm kind of pulling her into the hallway while we're doing this. We're not, okay. just so that we're not, like, in the open. Yeah. There's enough space in there, and then you can hear that Odega is still trying to explain <laughs> things to, uh, now to Maximus, although it seems like a, a different kind of story. And, and Maximus keeps injecting things, like trying to make the story more interesting, uh, kind of like, you know, so you were a, a, a people's fleeing a land under terrible oppression, and you came here to forge a new life and to find new ways to overcome your inherent limitations. And she's kind he's of planning his next act. <laughs> he, he definitely is trying to write the story as he's going to put it on stage someday. Um, but the, that little bit of that little bit of, of giddiness in her eyes is followed by as she, as you kind of drag her out. Um, death is all around us all the time. That's not something I'm afraid of. Yes, people die, but a place doesn't smell of death. Maybe it just smells that way because someone should be dead. Which sounds a lot darker than you might have expected from Sable. Is there something I should know that you know? We're trying to help you here. Let's just say... Stay away from my mother. It's safer that way for everyone.
And this time the word mother, there's not a hesitation, there's a contempt. Now, if you excuse me, there's a few other people I need to talk to. Of course. Have fun. Something is fucked up. And she kind of uh, goes back through the room and kind of deftly avoids the, the conversation with Odiga and Athanos. Athanos seems like she's, he's trying to speak to her and, and you know, the, the weird blobbiness that he is and this weird costume that was concocted for him, there's just sort of this one point that's coming up where the net is stretched out where his hand is and it just sort of, she kind of completely walks around him and the hand just sort of follows longingly to talk to her and then she's gone. As, as uh, And I want to I want to have it because it's hilarious as she steps in the hallway and once again steps right in the middle of, of where Wish is going to be traveling. So <laughs> for the third time in this in this uh, block, uh, he needs to kind of awkwardly walk around somebody. And yeah, she walks off to uh, to leave him. Now, you said I felt a presence. Was it a like, just like, seeing something across a room moving or like I felt something with my blind sense. You instinctively, oh, I got to remember the blind sense too. That's really good. You instinctively moved out of the way. You were looking away, looking back towards uh, to to where you just did the dance with Wish and mm-hmm. you felt somebody right beside you, but you instinctively moved out of the way to let them go so you wouldn't have the same problem you did with Wish. But when you looked mm-hmm. back, there was nobody there. You're, you swear you felt something. Okay. Actually, the blind sight would confirm it, that you definitely did feel something pass by you. Um, why don't we slip back upstairs for the moment and check in on the progress that uh, Silas is making? Sure. Now, he does not have training in these tools. Okay. I need to use the washroom. Is that okay? Yep, that's a good <laughs> time RB. to do it. Okay, BRB. Uh, but the tools give advantage, so hopefully that will help. Okay. Uh, is it dexterity based? Uh, sleight of hand. It is dexterity based, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, it would probably be thieves' tools, um, which he doesn't actually have. Yeah. But uh, I've got to so think about plus... synergy bonuses at some point. But yes, that's. Watch out, that's the way 3.5 went, and it didn't go well. Yeah, yeah. I got a 12. A 12? Yeah. So these are tinkering tools, not actual thieves' tools, tools as well. Yeah. Uh, and so as you're kind of trying to to pry this open, you can hear the creak of the wood a little bit under the stress of what you're trying to do. The lock is not opening, um, and you can kind of feel that if you're not careful, um, you could permanently damage the wood um, as well. Now, if you don't care about not damaging the wood, you can press on. Um, but it is yeah, not, not I'll press lock. on. Okay. So go ahead and make a second roll. I got a 15. 15? Um, there <laughs> is a I'm bit next. of... There is a bit of a, a, a creak in the wood as part of the uh, the spot between the two locks actually snaps off, but it does release the lock. Cool. I'm fine with that. Okay. Uh, he'll slip inside and then close the doors behind him. All right. Uh, oops. Too many mice. Um, and I will... Move the door out of the way. As indeed you find it is the what looks like the master bedroom of um, of the Baron and oh, Baroness. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I actually have their names. I looked them up. Elias and Corinthia. There we go. Um, wow, that's weird. You should be able to see in there. Not sure why. Is it your eyeball? Yeah, the eyeball's in the room. <laughs> I don't, it should be able to see things. Oh, I haven't, I, you know what? I haven't done the reveal. Yeah, I was just wondering that. All right, there we go. And move the 
reveal that one. If I put it on the dynamic layer, here we go. So we'll see the window. And we should see the room. And I'll drop a torch in the middle of the stupid room. There we go. Had to drop a torch. Sounds kind of dirty. Mm. Um, okay. So, as you see in this room, um, again, it's sparse only because I didn't have time to drop all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. in the room. Uh, but you see two very large four-poster beds, on one on each side. Uh, the one on the uh, the left is adorned with a, a brilliant blue-black um, uh, bedspread, uh, which has been uh, uh, disturbed, been, been kind of turned up. It's not made. Um, there's also two large chairs towards the end. The other end of the room is this massive, um, oh, weird. It put a block there. Uh, this massive uh, bay window with alternating uh, glass colors of blue and green. Um, and for some reason, mm. put a, uh, a wall there, but there shouldn't be a wall there. Um, okay, well... Silas is... Uh, okay. uh, sorry, as you look about the room, um, you'll notice that the large wardrobes by the front, you'll notice a couple of large mirrors as well, um, probably where they, they preen and, and press themselves. There are also uh, crates and uh, boxes in here. Um, just from looking around, one of the first things that you're thinking about is this room is a mess. Clearly the staff haven't been in here recently. Um, there are boxes that are open. The beds are, are not made. The wardrobes seem to be open. Some some clothing has been pulled out of them as well. Okay. Um, there's no, like, desk or anything that looks like an office sort of thing in here. It's just a bedroom area sort of thing. There's a, a, a few uh, uh, end tables and side tables, but nothing like yeah. a desk. Okay, he'll check through the the end tables and side tables for any drawers. Again, just quickly opening them. If there's some paperwork, he'll take a quick look and just see if it seems to be normal stuff or interesting. And if it's just uh, normal stuff, he'll put it back. Okay. Um, but he's trying to be fairly quick. Uh if you find something interesting, then a detailed look can happen later, but uh, okay, best not to be caught in here. Make an investigation check with disadvantage then for, for doing it through, because it's a fairly large room, um, even though there are some focus places to look through. Well, the natural 20 loses out to the four, which plus <laughs> three is seven. Okay. Um, as you're digging around, you're finding, uh, you know, handkerchiefs, which have been monogrammed. You're finding, uh, you know, light gloves. You're finding a whole manner of clothing. You do find uh, some, some gold rings and a few silver rings. You can choose to take those if you want. You found them. Um, no. Nothing, a few precious stones on them, but nothing terribly fancy. The one impression you're left with as you're looking through is, wow, there's nothing here. Somebody's mm. already been here is the conclusion you have. Everything's been tossed. Everything's been turned over. It looks like somebody's already gone through this spot. Well, then I'm getting back out as soon as, as quickly as possible. Okay. And just slip back out the door, close the doors. And the door kind of stands a little bit ajar as it no longer closes properly. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, then he'll head left and up, okay. where presumably there'd be more hallway and doors, that sort so of thing. When you come to the end, you find that there is a door here and a door here. So in the corner, there's two doors that could both go inward. He'll check the one to the left first, not expecting much, but just taking a quick look. Um, it is indeed unlocked, uh, and you see within several beds, in fact, there's a couple of people sleeping in the beds right now, um, 
and they kind of toss and turn and uh, kind of call out to you as the light from the hallway spills in towards them uh, and uh, kind of hold their hand up trying to trying to sleep here, man. Shift comes on in a while. They'll just quietly say, sorry, and then close the door. Okay. Um, uh, you get the impression then, that was the servants' quarters where multiple, yeah. many of the servants actually sleep. Yeah, and then he'll check the door in front of him, expecting if the architecture is mirrored that there's a short hallway. Okay. You open it up and find a large room in front of you yeah. uh, with multiple beds. And you see in the far end as well, right. there are two more uh, doors in the far end of this hallway. So does this look... Sorry. There's two more doors in the end of the hallway? Or, into the, or the uh, end far of the side room. of the room, I should say. It's two more okay. doors. Does this look more like a, a like more of a servant's quarters? Um, yeah, taking a quick glance inside, it does look like uh, more servant's quarters, similar beds to what was in the other room, but a lot more organized and ordered. Um, a little bit, and there's a small trunk at the foot of each one of the beds as well. Okay. There's a small wash basin as well on one side with a mirror. He'll just it. quickly go across to check the doors on the other side, but... Okay. Again, if this is servants' quarters, he's not expecting anything useful to be on the, to be attached to it. So um, he's just going to try to take a quick look. Okay, quickly checking, and they're both locked. It doesn't okay. look to be nearly what, as sturdy a door as what you had faced before, however. What kind of doors are they? Does it look like anything elaborate, uh, or is it just like a basic internal door? Very simple wooden doors. Okay. Um, does it have a keyhole? They do. He's going to try and look through the keyhole with his dark vision. Okay. Um, you look through the keyhole to this room. You realize it's a small room, uh, about 10 by 10 with a bed inside. Uh, it looks like a slightly better bed, slightly better pillow. Um, there's a, a, a nice, uh, uh, a mirror with some, some, uh, uh, um, uh, uh kind of a basin for water there as well. Mm. There's a, a, a set of clothes hanging up on one side. They look like they're all the same. All the clothes in the rack are the same. Yeah, uh, it looks like a head servant or something. Something like that, yeah. Okay. Um, looking through He's the just other gonna... one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, looking through the other one, you can't really see nearly as much, but it's it's similar. The room clearly is a lot bigger. It's like a, a 15 by 10, uh, 15 wide, so it's the rest of that corner. Uh, and it looks like it's even fancier. In fact, um where there are clothing hanging by the door, there's also a selection of hats, which seem to be a little fancier, uh, as well as kind of a, a, a selection of canes. Uh, looks like hmm. different carved wooden canes. The governess type that I saw earlier wasn't using a cane when she walked, was she? Nope. Okay. Still probably a head servant, so he'll head back out were there any other doors near that end section of hallway, or was that that? Uh, no, the next hallway is, um, or next door, sorry, is uh, down the hallway across from the stairs, so down here. Okay, yeah, he'll basically just continue uh, on down that one and just uh, be checking doors, looking for ones that are locked, ones that aren't, aren't locked, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, you find that the uh, next set of doors as you pass by, uh, this one is... Actually, I think that one at the moment is unlocked. You peer in and you see you get another uh, room full of beds. These ones are actually bunk beds. Um, looks yeah. like most of them haven't been slept in for a while, but a few of them have. Uh, and you see uh, actually racks by the door uh, of uh, weaponry and armor. Mm. Uh, looks like uh, swords are in a rack as well as small daggers in a rack and um, uh, guards uniforms, essentially. Yeah. Okay. He'll uh, keep going down. Basically, he's looking for, I guess... Uh, any office they would have, or if they've got some, something that looks like a ritual room. Okay. Um, the next space uh, is a room which is locked. 
Okay, he'll take a peek through the keyhole. And it's right there. See what he can see. Or actually, it's right there. Um, okay, uh, uh, it's off the map right oh, now. Pardon me. I just didn't scroll far enough. There we go. So you can see the door right beside you. Uh, actually, make a perception check as well at disadvantage. 13. 13? Okay. Um, looking through the keyhole, it's... Uh, let's see. That room is... Uh, it looks kind of in the same structure as the guest room you'd seen before, but very different coloring. Um, okay. It looks as though this one is patterned after... Uh, I'm scrolling right by it. Um... This one is patterned after a blue wave with white spray motif in the back, and the whole room is kind of centered around it. You can see a, a small bookcase off in the far side where there are a few odd objects. You can't really tell what they are from this distance, mm. um, but there's some sort of art objects on the on a shelf in the far room. Now, there weren't any doors in this big area to the right that I just passed? Uh, n no, there aren't any okay. doors there, but um, you had seen where the stairwell opens up. Um, so presumably yeah, that's so just that, the open space. So that's an open space. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For the, where the, above the foyer, basically yeah. extending its ceiling. Yep. Up. Okay. Yeah. He'll just keep going down the hallway. Okay. Um, Looking in, and again, these are, are uh, uh, locked. Um, looking in the doorway there, you see a room which is layers of green paint on the walls with triangular shapes imitating a forest. Uh, dark green, gray, and brown forest on the walls. Um, make a... Hmm. What would that be, actually? Oh, I'm going to say it is make a... Arcana check. Seventeen. Seventeen. Um, there's something odd about the way this room's light seems to flow. Uh, it seems to flow in a sort of rippling pattern across the room, almost as though it's being uh, diff changed by the window, but the window itself seems clear and normal. Um, there's something odd about this room, but you can't really quite, quite put your finger on it from where you are. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to... Uh, is there anything special about this door? Like there any anything written on it? Any symbols on it? Uh, is it a thick door or an average door? Um, looks like an average door, not as thick as the uh, the main bedroom door, but certainly not as thin as the interior door you'd seen before. So all of the guest room doors seem to have uh, a good quality to them. They're old wood, but they're fairly simple on the outside. Okay, and no markings like arcane room or no. something like that? Nothing labeled. Okay. He'll give the lock a try. Okay. I got a five. Okay. Uh, as you're kind of pounding away at the door and pounding away at the lock, it is not giving. It seems to be stuck, and the more you pound on it, the door is actually getting more stuck. And you hear a door uh, further down the hallway open up. And out Whoa. steps the rather tall woman uh, who looks at you. What do you think you're doing now? What do you look like at this point, actually? Uh, looks like a servant still. Okay, um, but, but bent over the door with a with a a, a chisel stuck in the door. Yep. Um, so, first of all, she comes out. What is all this banging? What are you doing there? And she looks rather upset. She she's now changed into what looks like bed clothes. Okay. Uh, he stands up with a sheepish look in his face, and the tools now look like a key that he was trying. 
So you're changing in the, with an illusion? Yeah. Uh, just the with the... Uh, he's switching the disguise self slightly so that it has a key instead of the... Uh, the tinker's tools okay that's pretty much a sleight of hand if you want to be able to do that okay. while someone's watching you and not have them notice uh where is it 24 24 okay no, uh, 19 yeah you're able to kind of pull them back behind you uh kind of yank the one out of the door and then uh have what looks like keys in your hand uh i'm i'm sorry ma'am uh the uh Harquins are last name, that's it. Uh I just say uh the Baron asked me to get something from here. Uh was there any um furniture in the room when he looked or is it an empty room? Uh it is a furnished room. Uh that is okay. a room that has a certain styling. Sorry, I don't I forgot to mention that part. Uh, it is decked out in cold blue and white decor. And you also saw the glints of uh, crystals, uh, as in probably crystal uh, lighting, crystal mirror, that sort of thing. Uh, no, sorry. Nope, this was the one that was decked out in shades of green. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Was there a desk and chairs, or was it, yes. did it look like a bedroom? Or okay, it is. It is most definitely a bedroom. You did see a bed in the corner, but there are uh, yeah, desk and chairs, a wardrobe, um, a uh, wash basin with mirror. Um, he, he left his signet ring in here, ma'am. Uh, he asked me to get it, uh, and he's keeping his eyes downcast. Um, and his face looks a little reddened. Okay. Um, why on earth would she, would he be leaving a signet room in the, or a signet ring in the forest room? That makes no sense. I will allow you to make a, uh, a, uh, deception check. Ooh. But they're going to get advantage. Uh, 11. Uh oh. Oh my God. Okay. So a 26 and a 23 for their detect bullshit roll. Um, what did you say they your name was? They have detected the bullshit. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. the label on this character is governess. If there's anyone yep. ever efficient and proficient in detecting bullshit, it's someone who is takes it the care same lady as before. It is the same lady as before. Okay. Um, so she steps a bit closer um, and looks very angry. Um, that's not going to wash. What did you say your name was again? Uh, let's see. I'm going to try something. I haven't tried this in ages. Uh oh. Um, that's never he's going to use, uh, yeah, he's going to look at her with uh, uh, a very piercing stare and make a suggestion. Oh, okay. Which he gets to do once a day. Uh, Is that as per the suggestion spell? Yep. Okay. Yeah, he gets the suggestion spell once per day. Okay. Now this is going to drop his... Uh, is uh, the sneaky spell pass without trace because they're both concentration? Which, uh, frankly, oh wait, she's an elf type, isn't she? Uh, she definitely seems to have elfish traits. Yes, then no, <laughs> <laughs> no attempting to charm the elfy person. Um, I mean, it could work. Yeah. So actually, what's his? It's got a spell save of 15. That's not bad. Yeah, he'll try it. Um, no suggestion. Uh, he looks at her uh, and says, um, are you sure that it doesn't make sense? The Baron's forgotten things before. Perhaps we should take a look and make certain because we don't want to put the Baron in a bad mood, do we? And what kind of save was that? It's probably it's a wisdom, wisdom. save. Um, yep. Uh, now he's got a 15. Okay. Uh, 
she, uh, difficulty. She does have advantage on it, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, first roll is 21, second is 25. Wow, I don't get to roll much okay. today, but they are going pretty well. Um, so also, she's, she's a, a bullshit detector by nature, and wisdom is one of her strongest traits. Um, yeah. Where she, she, she deals with Sable. She, yeah. And yet, Sable has managed to sneak out before. Makes you question mm -hmm. everything. Um, uh, she looks uh, very cross at you. I don't know what you're trying to play at, but I strongly suspect that you're not supposed to be here. Who are you, really? He's a... Um... My name's Ilden, ma'am. Uh, ma Ilden uh, Surrey. Please, uh, please don't fire me. I should make a list I just of got this job and... Ilden yeah. Surrey. All right. If magic's not working, he's relying on normal bullshitting. Okay. Um, Which also didn't work, but hey. Um... But it might work this time. I mean, there's always a yeah. chance, right? Um, so sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was just, no. just names are flowing thick and fast for me here. Um, yeah. Um, sorry, Mom. Just the the others. They told me that that everybody has to get into one of the rooms within the first three days of hiring or. Or the master will let them go. Right. And that At is that point. Be a bullshit roll. Yeah. <laughs> can I make uh, can I make performance? Uh, no, you're straight out lying. Okay. Uh, performance. Okay. Well. Okay. Make the case for performance to me then. He's trying. Well, he's trying to play a dumb servant who's been basically. You know those places where you, I, I mean, I've not worked at one, but uh, where you go to work at a place and they tell you to do something because everybody does it. And then Hashtag you do hazing. it and you find mm. out that that was a complete lie and okay. they were hazing you. Uh, he's trying to pretend that he's a young, naive servant who's getting hazed and really doesn't know what's going on. Okay. Um, I have to be cautious here because I don't want performance to become the the be all and mm -hmm. all of deception, persuasion, and all the others. Um, uh, wisdom of the crowds. What say the uh, uh, Annie and Medric in this situation? I mean, he is acting. He's not yeah. just lying. He is acting. He's pretending to be a character that is not him. Okay, all there right. is a difference. <laughs> For this roll, then go ahead and roll uh, performance. Please don't roll on one. Oh, a nineteen. That's a thirty total. Okay, she is rolling at advantage because you've yep. been bullshitting her for a while. Uh huh. Uh, so let's see what the That's first reasonable. roll is. First roll is twenty six. Second roll is twenty seven. Second roll is nineteen and twenty on those two rolls. Oh. So you rolled a thirty though. Yep. Um. So she is still very suspicious. Uh, mm -hmm. But there is a small moat of sympathy that appears in her eye. I thought we had settled this matter and we were not going to be dealing with this anymore. You have made a fool out of yourself. And you deserve to be fired, but in this case, I suppose, there are others that need to be disciplined. Out with it. Who are the names of the people that told you this? Uh. <laughs> mm. Okay. Silas is trying to think of names that would be common to the area. Okay. John Smith. Uh, that sort of thing, like the name Chris twenty years ago or so, or right. thirty years <laughs> it ago. It is. A, it is a relatively uh, diverse population because it is a port city as well. But yeah, okay. Uh, you want to try to give some uh, some some reasonably good. Uh, I think this is going to be a history check. God, um, I wish I had mind reading because uh, I think that's the that's kind of the idea of understanding the area and remembering how it's been and who all these people are. And yeah, uh, do the servants have name tags by any chance? 
They do no. not. Thankfully, I didn't wear them. Fuck. Let them wear masks. That was the original idea that you wouldn't be able to tell the servants <laughs> apart. But no, nah, that's just mean. Okay. Um, just try to think. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, so yes. Uh, sorry. What skill roll was I get? History. History. 17 plus 3, so that's a 20. Okay. Uh, how many names do you give? He's going to say one as though it was one, by one primary person and then give another one. It's like, uh, it was... Uh, oh, actually, oh, this is this is good. Uh, it was it was Tadri, ma'am, uh, and and uh, Davin, the other guy that was hired when I was, <laughs> the one you pretended to be the first time. Yes, the one she met like two minutes ago. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, ma'am. Honest, I am. Honest you are not, but at least in this moment, perhaps more of a dupe than anything else. Very well. He looks at her quizzically. Dupe? Come with me, then. And she turns to the right-hand wall, which is a fairly nondescript uh, wooden wall that mm -hmm. have these, uh, these round uh, nodules every so often. And she reaches up. A little bit almost too high for her. She reaches up and presses onto the wall and turns, and a hidden door opens up uh, to your right hand, uh, right hand, well, to your left hand side as you're facing downward, basically right there. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, and revealing a set of stairs going downward. And I will see if I can reveal those. Um, a set of stairs going downward. Very narrow stairs that head uh, down from there. It's hard for me to show because it's not. Oops, that's the thing there. Uh, oops, I just put her in there. <laughs> She's not going in the box. You are. There, see if I can put the eye. Well, you can't really see much from there because there's no light. Um, <laughs> uh, if it's not one thing, it's 15 others. There, light. There you go. It's not really much to see. I don't know why I bothered. Uh, it, it, as uh, she opens up a set of stairs and, be, and proceeds to lead you down the stairs. They are very narrow stairs, very uh, plain looking wood, nothing, uh, nothing uh, mm. fancy, nothing really all that uh, uh, well uh, constructed. It, does it sound like I'm heading towards the party? Yes. Or is it muffled? As soon as the door opens, you, you, you realize this, this wall itself is kind of swung outward, and the wall itself is quite thick. Uh, and she uh, begins to kind of push you ahead. Come down, then. We're going to go see the Chamberlain. Or, sorry, see, see hey. the, uh, not the Chamberlain. See the butler. Let's see. Yeah. Go to the others. I have to think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've dug myself a deep enough hole. Let's try to <laughs> um, go back to the main floor. Um, and admittedly, we're running into a little bit later than, than we, uh, because we had a bit of a late start. So we'll do maybe a scene or two more, and then we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up uh, maybe with what, uh, what Silas hopes he can achieve <laughs> <clears throat> as he pokes around this place. Um, starting with, uh, let's start with, uh, with Medric. So yep. you and Melora have been talking for a little while. Melora has just brought you this terrible drink and told you not to drink it because it's awful and it nearly made you gag. In fact, it did make me gag because like I rolled shit. Oh, that's right. But, it did uh, actually make you whoop. gag. Fortunately, you were only having just the tip of the tongue yep. on, the, on the crap of the stuff. Um, like you mentioned that she blushed and looked away at something else when I asked, like if she recalled the rot and like ponds come smell when we came in. Right. So can I do an insight? Can I do an insight check on that? I think that was an insight check, uh, and oh, you okay. rolled kind of okay. Uh, basically, she did not notice anything on the way in, probably because she was okay. looking at you. Oh, okay. gotcha, gotcha. Fuck! I accidentally rolled and I got a twenty. <laughs> well, that, that that was a wasted twenty. Anyway, 
Well, we should probably... Uh, can you show me the people who made this drink? I can take you there if you want. And you're... Yeah. I don't know fine. who... You... I don't know who made it. It was on the plate, on the table with all the rest. All right. Uh, and yours was equally awful? No, oh, I didn't even bother tasting it. I could smell it. Judging from your reaction, I'm, I think I made the right choice. Yeah, you did. Okay. I'm glad to be of service. But uh, yeah, let's uh, go see what the hell is going on there. Okay. And she kind of leads you back. Um, you can see now that Oliver has made his way uh, out and through and is escaping from uh, the Phoenix as well as from uh, Odega. Um, does not seem to have the woman with him at this point. And now uh, Caden is trying to escape from Odega as Max has also fled at this point. They're the rambly people. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, they haven't made it that far into the, into the space, but they've been um, persistent. Uh, meanwhile, the two of you are making your way from where you were, um, kind of passing through this area, You're both in the hallway. I just happened to grab them the wrong way. Uh, I will have you make a perception check at disadvantage, please. There's an 11 and a 17, so 16 total. 16 total. Yeah. Um, as you're moving up that hallway, um, you're kind of uh, still, the, 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 the taste of this has not left your, your lips. Yeah, it's one of those things that you're going to need to have something stronger and more aggressive to try to get rid of the taste of this thing. Um, but just for a moment, as you're moving down the hallway, there is a, a smell that floods your nose. And it's a dry, uh, um, bitter smell. Um, and it feels like it sort of emanates in a spot. But as you move beyond that spot, uh, it no longer seems to be there. Um, and it, Is it a you, smell that could like be a drink that could potentially wash this abomination from my taste buds? No, it's more like the smell oh. of someone passing by you. Okay. But you didn't see anybody there. Right. I'm just going to move a few people around as they would have kind of circulated at the moment. Uh, wash. Uh, yeah, Wish takes one look inside, sees Ogdega there, and heads to the other side of the building. Um, oh, yeah, there we go. Squid Lady is going to uh, corner Dudek. Uh, oh no! <laughs> but it was odd, and it causes you to pause for a moment uh, and kind of wonder. N not really sure what that was, but if you felt a, a presence, but saw nothing there. It feels like there's somebody walking around who's invisible. Is what I'm saying. Uh, and Melora kind of Players, looks at you. Uh, Melora kind of looks looks at you, and, and did, did you smell that? Yeah, I did. Oh well, maybe some of your senses are coming back. Then it's in here, and. Uh, uh, she leads you into the dining room. Uh, you mm -hmm. see uh, Angus um, kind of across the way. There's a whole lot of little snacks and like finger stamp sandwiches and little baked goods and stuff that are set out across this table. And servants have been coming in. So even though people have been in here eating all this time, they're just load after load coming through. And it looks like Angus has tried just about every single bit that he can get a hold of. You can see that some of the crumbs are in his beard. Uh, he's kind of wiped it off with the back of his hand. Uh, and uh, he seems to have a, a bottle of, of uh, something as well that he's sort of drinking out of as well. Uh, on, oh, God, is he the one mixing the drinks? <laughs> on the other end of the, 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 the room, you see uh, trays have been set out with uh, prepared drinks already, which they look like the one that you've just had. Uh, also standing uh, there beside, uh, the, uh, uh, beside the table is someone who's wearing what looks like you're not quite sure at first. It's this weird sort of shimmery pink uh, 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 oblong mask. And then you realize it's probably a salmon uh, that they're wearing. 
And you also notice that they are uh, kind of tall and gangly uh, and have a, uh, a blue-colored skin, like an ocean blue-colored skin. Uh, the dress, uh, the clothing otherwise is fairly simple and fairly loose hanging there. And at the far end, you see uh, that thin uh, blonde woman who was with uh, Oliver, I believe, before, with the yellow, with the white mask with the yellow lace across it. Uh, kind of okay. looking and kind of, she looks like she's looking over each of the different things as they've been brought out. Uh, and the other one seems to be, uh, the one with the blue skin is picking up one of these drinks and is about to drink it. Uh, you might want to put that down. It's, it might be contaminated. Uh, who makes these drinks? Uh, and they, they kind of cock their head at you. Contaminated? Hmm. And they sniff I tried it. it. Well, it, it smells like pond scum. Oh, my favorite. And they take the drink and toss it back. Uh-huh. And amazingly, there is not the same reaction as what you had. Although you can actually smell, even from this distance, that it does smell the same. Blech. Mm, very much like pond scum. Intriguing. I did not think they would serve that here. Wait, what? Strange kind of voice and accent. What um, is this called? The, the, this drink, I mean. Because I, I tried it earlier and I almost threw up. <laughs> Personal preference, maybe? I don't know. At the very... Uh, make an insight check, actually. Um, as they, they kind of proceed to grab another one. Uh, and you can see... Actually, you can kind of feel Melora beside you. Sort of trying not to dry. Inside check because... is a two, so a total of eleven. Oof, oof, okay. I think. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Still, yeah. still better than nothing. Um, the yeah. one standing in front of you doesn't seem to be reacting. It's, it's sniffing at the second one. It's you can again smell it from this distance. I don't know who mixed these, but uh, I would like to speak to the the person who did. Um, at the other end, um, you can see the 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 woman with the white uh, and yellow lace. Uh, kind of rolling up her her, uh, her nose. Well, I guess that's what they serve here. And kind of looking and, and poking and prodding kind of at the the baked goods and pastries at the other end uh, and kind of holding one up, almost like uh, examining it, smelling it, kind of trying to figure out if it's any good. Uh, if you're not uh, the same race as he is, you might want to take a really, really small slip, small sip at first. Uh, this is a pastry she's got, she's holding up. Oh, gotcha. Uh, okay. At the, far, at the far other end. Uh, and she kind of puts it back down cautiously. Um, Angus picks up I mean, if, the... if it's not a drink, I'm not going to say that. Because okay. I just thought she was picking up a drink. Uh, Angus uh, takes a, a swig out of whatever bottle he has, which looks kind of like a crude bottle. Um, it's not likely one he found here, or at least didn't find in this particular room. Uh, and uh, eats a couple of the, 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 the pastries on the table. I don't see what the terrible thing is. Smells like crap, though. Oh, the drink? Have you tried it? Hells no. Huh. I got this stuff. And he's, he holds up the bottle. And you can see this, it's like a crude, br uh, thick glass brown bottle. Uh, and it's kind of half full. Sloshes a little bit as he's, as he's uh, waving it around. Brought my own. Figured it'd be safer that way. Well, I didn't think I would say this, but you're probably right. Are they, I'll ask uh, the Triton guy, or I'll ask the room in general, are they mixing anything else, or is this the only drink available? Uh, the uh, the, the salmon-headed one, who is indeed a Triton, you've, you've been able to kind of suss that out, uh, is, is kind of like, I hope they're not making anything else. I love this stuff. But they're probably making something for you, non-blues. Your surface. Yeah, your that, that's surface what I meant. Waters. That's what I meant. Um, They've made all kinds of stuff out here. First time I've seen that stuff, though. I don't remember looking quite so soupy when I, when I saw it first come up, though. And at the far end, everything comes from below. It's like magic. Who said that? The, the woman at the far end in yellow lace. Okay, gotcha. Do I recognize her at all, like, even through, through the mask? Um, you can make a, um, I guess, a history check. Say with disadvantage. Oh cause... no, that's a minus one. <laughs> There's a seventeen <laughs> and a ten. <laughs> that seventeen would have been okay though. Yeah, no, she don't. You don't recognize her. Um, she has. She's a, a fairly attractive, uh, 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 sl slim but uh, slim build. Little t little shorter than you. 
uh, blonde hair, uh, wearing a, a slightly revealing dress, but mostly revealing because she seems to not really notice it. From below, like the basement? Um, through the door over there. And she just points at the door in the far end of the room. Which one? Uh, there's, there's two. Uh, sorry, this one back here. Okay. And uh, she says, she kind of shrugs. Oh, well, I guess that's something then. And just sort of saunters out of the room. <laughs> kind of wanders through the door. I'll just look at Melora. And I, I'll just... My, my look expresses, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and I'll ask her, do you know who that was by any chance? Um, no, I, I have no idea who anybody is here. My name is Ocean. Like the water, says the uh, Triton beside you. A, a, uh, uh, hands, or pulls out his hand to, to shake. Uh, it is a bit larger than a human hand. It has uh, slightly mm. more pointed uh, 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 nails at the end. Has a slightly uh, uh, wet feeling if you if you shake his hand. Okay, yeah, I'll shake his hand, and I'll introduce myself to a Medric, Camara Vignes. Oh, I know who you are. You are the Phoenix Champion, yes? Yeah, people call me that. Ah. I just try to do good in the world, and I guess fame comes with it. World travel, or world travels even under the waters where I normally stay. Uh, but yeah, I, thought, I might have been under the water a few times. <laughs> oh, it's a good place. I can show you some places. I can show you some places to fish, too. And he kind of winks through the, the mask. Uh, yeah. I am here to represent all of the people to fish. And they have elected me, and I like this. It's a responsibility. You sure you don't want some of this? And he kind of holds uh, out one I, of the I drinks towards you. Before. It doesn't uh, appeal to my... Uh, well, I, I can't just say genetic makeup, because that's not a thing in this world. <laughs> <laughs> Many it doesn't appeal you... to my constitution as much as it does yours, but I'm glad that you are enjoying them because it would be a shame to have those drinks go to waste. I know. Nobody makes it like this. It's like the taste of rotten fish. Right. It takes a <laughs> long time to, to, to make something like this under the water. There are some places yeah, on land you can make it, but it's never the same. I wonder if they would share the recipe with you. Oh, maybe, but I'm no good at making things. I catch the fish... That's what I do. Okay. So who sent you this invitation? Well, there was a nice a young landwalker who came down to the docks. It took a while to get to me because I was under the water for a while. But what? when I came back, word came, and I was very happy. It didn't name help. me by name, but it named me by job, and I'm okay with this. You said your name is Ocean, like the ocean? Yes. Ocean Hopkins. Uh, my my dad was a landwalker. Wait, what? How does that? Well, I'm not. I'm about to ask. Like, how does that work? But... My parents are very happy. That's good. Yeah, okay, but like, player is wondering of like, how do Triton genetics work? <laughs> <laughs> it's really that humans are compatible with everything, given enough time and some magic. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> are, are your parents here too? Or? Oh, I'll no, be back no, no. in a minute. All right. <coughs> My parents are very far away from here. Back in Vroske, where I come from. Okay. Do I know where that is? Again, a history check. No disadvantage this time, but... Three. I have no fucking clue where that is. <laughs> Sounds like a town or an island somewhere. Is that an island or? Oh yes. Well, no. I mean, yes, sort of. It's an island, except it's mostly underwater, which makes it not an island at all. Right. So underwater town. Gotcha. Hey, uh, are you familiar at all with a, a being called Oxia? She's a sea devil. Uh, and generally his, a bad person. His eyes go wide at the mention. I know this sea devil, yes. Why? She's yeah, not here, is she? Her. And he, he looks no, around nervously. We, we, I was just wondering, she took off with uh, something that belonged to us, and we would like to get it back. 
Ah, she stole something from you. They are known to do this. They also attacked a while ago on all of the land, but yep. that yeah, is not what they are known back. to do. That was very strange for them. My people know of their kind a lot, but generally they are, uh, they take the opportunity where they see it. They try yeah. to uh, 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 take a ship as it's sinking, or they try to take people while they sleep. Mm -hmm. not they, 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 they tried to take a few of our friends as well. Uh, so I take your I take it that your people do not like the sea devils at all. So no, in any are. future confrontations, could we possibly count on you to assist us? Well, I don't know what I can do, but I suppose. I do not like them when they attack. I do not like them when they steal things. But this Oxia is a very dangerous one. Ambitious. She is. There are times when our peoples get along. Uh, but never her. She does not consider anyone else to be her equal. And then she found something deep in the water one day. The Star Stone. I don't know what it was, but it changed her. She grew in power and ambition. And then stranger things have been seen under the waters, too. Like what? Or something like a whale. Was... But... <laughs> what something... was that? What was that, sorry? Silas. Well, yes, that's fair. <laughs> there are more landwalkers under the sea. It's strange. No. Um, something like a whale, but dangerous. Uh, whales, they will not harm you. Unless you look like small fish. And then they will eat you. So don't look like small fish. But these whales, they were more like, uh, more like uh, an octopus underneath the sea, but bigger and more dangerous. And they made strange sounds, too. Metal sounds as they moved. Metal sounds? Yes. I did not get too close. We, did, we went in a different direction, but we also followed the fish. You ran away really quickly, too. And you know what they say about following the fish? No? What, what do they say? Always follow Blind the fish. Water here. <laughs> oh, okay, so... It's just like player comprehending things. Mm -hmm. Made metal sounds, so that's that means uh, Teraz is probably making like robot whale octopuses. I mean, you can draw Fuck. your own conclusions. <laughs> metal sounds, huh? I, I don't like the sounds of that. I don't either. Very shrill, hard on the ears. Uh, a while back, and I'll say approximately the time it was where we like first met Taraz on the arm and the arm just kind of like flew away. Did he witness that? Um, I did not. I was out fishing, but many have told me of it. Very strange. Large arm floating through the air as if it was supposed to do that. Yeah, and then there was some kind of organ that blew out of the coastline. And uh, I, I suspect that the person in charge of this fuckery, who I will not name because he seems to just appear when he's named, is responsible for the same thing. Ah. For the metal metal wells, I mean. This will become a problem in the future, I can guarantee you. <laughs> so this... if you have any information, please let me know. Oh. I live at the Temple of Ignis in... Elfodder. Of course you do. I know where you live. You are the Phoenix champion. Yeah, right. I keep forgetting. <laughs> How could you forget? You are it. Yeah. But yes, I will keep my eyes well peeled to the water. I never understood that landwalk of me expression. Why would I peel my eyes? Anyway, I will look mm -hmm. and I will see and I will tell. And I will tell all of my fishers to do so. That is much appreciated. Thank Man, you very much. Many of them are afraid to take their boats out, or they are worried about losing them. There have been some lost. To the mechanical whales? No one knows. No one came back to say. But they went out and did not come back. Not every boat. Not all the time. Just sometimes. I mean, sometimes right. it happens anyway. A bad wave. Big rain. Could be bad. But this seems but more worse on good days. 
but your people can breathe underwater even if their ship got sank they can swim back to my i yes but not all fishers are like me yes i suppose there are many fishers here at this dock hundreds of them and i'm just remembering silas and it's like right right yeah <laughs> i do that <laughs> and maybe fishing... that drink affected me more than i thought <laughs> the, the, fish, the fishing industry is big here and you kind of gather as you're talking to uh, ocean that um although he never would use the word fisher's guild essentially he's the leader of the fisher's guild which is all yeah. the fishermen in in the, the shore may or may not include the ones at uh, the marsh clan yeah i'll, I'll just say casually like as a conversation as a conversation goes on i'll just name drop silas and the fact that he's here and so is odiga and ethanos i did not see this silas uh, but Odega and uh, Athenos, I could smell. Yeah. Uh, Silas may be um, doing questionable activities upstairs, but shh, you never heard that from me. I don't care who he sleeps with. But <laughs> 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 It's not exactly what I meant, but uh, yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> no problem. And he kind of touches the side of his of his salmon face. Um, and this is and quite I'll the go party. ask. It is. It's only getting started, too. What's uh, uh, Melora doing? Melora doing? Uh, Melora is actually time. over and kind of wanders around the table and is talking quietly to Angus. Okay. Uh, who seems to be not as steady on his feet as he should be. Uh-oh. He wasted. He may have picked up a bottle of rum on his way in town. Uh, <laughs> through. And Angus is speaking Angus, a little sir. bit louder than he should, probably in response to her answers. No, <laughs> I don't think so. I, I don't know what's going to happen for me next. Sorry, you were saying? I didn't jump into that conversation. Oh, I wasn't saying anything. I was just... <laughs> but Molora seems to be trying to calm him down, and yeah. uh, he's seems to be a little bit bitter and, and a little confused. Um, you do hear him say, I don't know why I'm here. I shouldn't be here. Jonas should be here. Angus. Ah? How are you? I'll just give him a greeting. It's like, nice seeing you here. Oh, nice seeing you too. <laughs> this is sort of he knows who you are he yeah. does respect you but that doesn't mean much necessarily because he doesn't really care about anybody that much he has been alone so for you, a long time so you mentioned uh, you weren't expecting an invitation who invited you no I, I guess it was the Baron or Baroness I mean they were ones running this party I, I, I would have expected Jonas or someone else I don't know. Hmm. Enjoying it so far? He kind of just picks up one of the pieces of pastry. Yeah, I guess. He says, <laughs> crumb kind of falls down into his uh, spotted beard. About that point, um, a maid comes in and kind of surveys the damage uh, and picks up and kind of does that thing that servers do at a, at a formal function where they kind of combine together the the, uh, the the empties into one so they can clear off some space for some new things to come in uh, and then leaves with some of the empty trays. Oh, hey, excuse me. Uh, th th those drinks there, were they made by request or? Uh, we're told to make a bunch of drinks. Okay. I don't know who made those only... ones in particular, but. Is there only that variety or are there other ones? We can make others. What would you like? Nice. I was going to say, like, off the top of my head, Dirty Cobalt, because that's what's in D&D &D &D Online. But <laughs> <laughs> I'll see what the... Uh... Something that's on fire. Oh, um, okay, I'll, I'll see what we can do. And she kind of... You can see the, 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 the bewildered look on her face, like, how am I going to deliver something that's on fire? Do we Can we, can we do that? Is that safe? Uh, but the uh, the sort of servant face comes down and all of the emotions wipe away. She goes, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do, sir. And as she goes to the other end of the I table... Just just to... I, just read in, I just read in my notes, 
invent a drink that's on fire that's called the Phoenix Champion. <laughs> you know me, I normally have a whole menu. I didn't do that in this particular case. Uh, but she goes to the other end of the table and kind of excuses herself and, and uh, Melora and... Uh, 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 I realized, pardon me, I didn't move the map. Uh, Melora and... Uh, Angus uh, kind of moved back out of the way. Uh, and she comes close to that end of the table and her nose wrinkles up in disgust as she smells the drinks. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. And she starts to pile them uh, and to take away the tray, to which point Ocean kind of, no, no, leave these ones. These ones are mine. Uh, yeah, the Ocean loves the drinks. Are, are you sure, sir? I think something's gone wrong. Is he sure? Ocean is like, or, or was they she, taste fine or to was me. Was he talking to me? Well, she's kind of looking back and forth between the two of you, but Ocean's like, they taste fine to me. Oh, okay, sir. Yeah, I mean, he, he loves them, but everybody else is kind of repulsed by them. <laughs> oh. Or at least I tried to sip earlier because, you know, you, you, you got to try everything once, and yeah, it, it did not go well with my stomach. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry about that, sir. I'll see if I can find something that's on fire, <laughs> and uh, I will get a fresh round of drinks for everyone else. Sounds good. She kind of backs up and she coughs a little bit, kind of just the edge of that 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 stench from this end uh, causes her to 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 force herself not to retch. Thankfully, she didn't get that close to it. Uh, she takes the trays out and leaves. Um, Melora kind of I gives also you have a, to make a drink called Punk's Punk's Gun. <laughs> Melora kind of <laughs> looks at you with this sort of quizzical look as to what was that all about, uh, and uh, yeah. Kind of looking at, at you for that. Mm. Um, how about well, I we heard have about drinks that could be on fire, but one more scene with uh, Annie, and then we'll have one brief uh, see if 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 uh, Silas has an idea about what's going to be pending here. Um, so where is Annie off to, and what does Annie want to do? What's her goal right now? Um, so she is going to wander look if there's anything that looks suspicious down the hallways. Okay. Um, down this particular hallway, you do see uh, a big set of double doors. You're, you're not far from it there in, on the map as it is. Um, mm -hmm. They look to be uh, pretty nice looking doors. It does look like they're, they're, you kind of probably casually do the shuck, 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 and the door is, is, uh, is locked. Um you also kind of pass down the hallway. Uh, and then the only other door you see uh, is way down at the other end. Uh, you find another door here. Oops, I gotta, gotta remember I've got two, two spaces to look. Uh, and this one does look like a, a firm uh, door and it also seems to be locked. Okay. Um, you do see a servant uh, kind of pop out of, uh, make sure I get the right mouse here. Uh, so a servant comes kind of, okay. So a servant comes out into the general space. And you see them uh, going to a few particular people. Seems like they're whispering something to them uh, and then uh, pointing um, and kind of pointing uh, off to the far side of the room, kind of where you are, and then indicating around the corner. Uh, and then the, the, those kind of nod, and you see a number of people moving in that direction. In particular... Uh, you see, let's see who's here. Uh, someone you just passed in the hallway who's dressed as a gull. Um, that is a... Oop, doo -doo. I have these listed in three places under three different ways, and of course that means I can't find anything when I'm looking for it. Um, it is a, a, a stalwart-looking uh, young woman. Uh, dressed plainly, but well-dressed, kind of moving down the hallway. Um, let's see. I need to just get them all into one space here. I also only have one one, one window, and I'm currently using it for everything. 
Uh, so let's see. The ram goes in that direction, which is one of the dwarves. Uh, you heard the name Caden before, who is the uh, uh, dressed as a peacock. You see that name or that person heading down that hallway. Uh, let's see. Um, you see them speak to Wish, who looks surprised and heads down the main thoroughfare, and then you see them pop out of the hallway as well. And... Uh, okay, the eagle. Um, and you also see someone uh, come and talk to Verendel, who you can see just inside the room. Uh, and Verendel nods uh, and kind of gives you a, 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 conf a sort of shrug and a, and a, and a wonder uh, and then heads down. You also see the Baron heading in that same direction. And Medric, a young page comes to you. Excuse mm. me, sir. You are yeah. the Phoenix champion. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, the Baron is requesting your presence uh, in the... Uh, the library. Do I know where the library is? Uh, you have no idea. Right, could you point me to the library? Of course, sir. It's my first time here. Well, okay, technically second time, but I have, I've never seen the library. <laughs> so I will uh, let's see. I think I've got everybody there. Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, and, uh, they lead you through to where the library is. Mm. You see that is also... Is coming with me? Pardon? Is Melora coming too? Or? Um, Melora, uh, looks like she's about to. Uh, I'm sorry, mister, but the Baron was very specific about the people they wanted to speak to. And Melora kind of sh uh, shrugs. Okay. Uh, Is this going to be long? Or? I have no idea, sir. All right. Uh, and I'll just whisper to Melora, it shouldn't be too long. Uh, just make sure Angus doesn't get too wasted. <laughs> I'll do my best. I can hold more than this. And he kind of holds up the bottle. Oh, <laughs> it's more gone than I thought. Should have bought two. So, Annie, you you observe Been that, there. that Been uh, there. Uh, this that there have been a, a, a few different mm -hmm. pages have gone around the room and asked specific people uh, who all tend to be heading off in that direction. And you can see the Baron also heading off in that direction. Um, when I see that Varendale is talked to, I'm going to kind of go over and be like, oh, there you are. I was looking for you. Okay, you're going to intercept him before he gets gets there? Essentially? Yeah. Okay. I will reset him back. So Athenos got summoned, but not Odiga? Um, that is seemingly correct. As you see Odiga standing there, kind of looking about, going with, with a bit of bewilderment and looking for anybody to talk to. Uh, the swan that's right beside her uh, who is she? Uh, oh yeah, they couldn't look further apart. So the 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 swan is the tall, uh, uh, t uh, toned, muscled, uh, almost dancer type person beside Odiga, who is um, well, she's got a snake head on, and her clothing. Well, she thinks it's probably quite professional. Uh, it is not flattering in the slightest. Uh, but Odega finds very almost, very nothing <laughs> to say to her and kind of wanders into the main room. Um, so, but we are uh, with Annie at the moment. So uh, you and you and Verendel kind of uh, kind of come to the center of the room and I'll move the wooden duck out of the way so you don't have that conversation too close with anybody else. Oh, they split the party, motherfuckers. Uh, I'll ask, what were you, do, where are you guys going? I to me? 
No, to Varendel. Okay. I wasn't given any detail, just that the Baron wanted to speak with me, and looks like a number of other people as well. I kind of expected there would be smaller meetings, so maybe that's all this is. Not everybody can fit into one room, and it's hard to have a conversation with a lot of people, but... It's a little bit odd. It's very odd. I'm yeah. going to sleight of hand a bobby pin into his hand. Okay. And tell him to stay safe. All right. Uh, make a, a sleight of hand roll. Oh, that's a natural 17. Um, do, do, do. So... Uh, 24. 24. So yeah, you kind of smoothly uh, slide it into his hand. He kind of looks surprised and holds onto your hand for a little second longer than he might have thought, or you might have thought was necessary, as he seems to have misunderstood the gesture. Oh, um, yes, you stay well too. And he kind of reaches out an awkward hand and then sort of pats you on the shoulder, <laughs> not really knowing what to do. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll squeeze the hand back. Okay. Uh, and he kind of fairly, after all of that, still fairly smoothly actually deposits the, the bobby pin in, in his, uh, into a, a sort of side pouch or side pocket. So he has it with him before heading in. Um, that will be one of the scenes we start next week, but outside, uh, as, and if you happen Hashtag to go back. makeshift thieves tools. <laughs> and as you happen to go in that direction, or if you happen to, you'll notice the door has been closed behind them. It is a fairly full room. Uh, but you're pretty sure you saw Medrick going into that room, so that can't be bad, right? Right. Um, <laughs> uh, meanwhile, you see uh, the the rest of the people there. Um, if you don't remember, Aknaranda, uh, Aknaranda is the uh, Chamberlain. Uh, they're the tax collector that was kind of gleefully telling them that the taxes were going up. Um, oh, uh, the one who uh, accidentally misspelled my name as Nidric, right? That's right. And is still trying to hunt down that criminal <laughs> who's been... Oops. Uh, <laughs> no, I did say there was a typo. I did, like, own up to it. It's like, oh, no, you, you guys made a typo. Uh, well, Clearly, it, I feel actions. Yeah, to, to Akinarada, <laughs> it's basically, you don't have to apologize for this Nidric character. We'll catch them. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're the tax department. We're completely efficient. Um... <laughs> So, uh, what else, what are, or who would any want to encounter at the moment? The Baroness is there kind of chatting with different people, um, watching the room kind of carefully. I'll probably go speak with Dudek. Okay. Just chit-chat, how's the night been? Well, as you get close, um, you see Dudek is in conversation, vigorous conversation, um, with another dwarf. Um, this is the dwarf that has this strange squid-like mask on. It's like a, a, a cap that they're wearing, and these tentacles mm -hmm. are flowing out over where their beard is. And she seems to be very vigorously telling uh, uh, Dudek about the, uh, where is the term here? Uh, the, the squid heads. Mm -hmm. Um, I've heard of them since I was a child and I know they're stalking the halls now. It's just a matter of time where something bad happens. Is that so? Well, do tell me more. And there's sort of this, this talk about, uh, strange creatures that, that stalk the, uh, the, the, uh, the local mountainside or stalk inside the mountain rather where she's from. And how they've been, how there've been a whole bunch of strange disappearances recently, but everybody keeps claiming it's just rock slides uh, or natural occurrences. Nothing natural about it. I know the squid heads are after it again. When Dudek seems um, to be uh, kind of calmly receiving the news, but also kind of, you may be crazy, but it's an interesting story kind of response. But spotting you, ah, good to see you again. Good to see you. Interesting event. Uh, it is um, unusual. And the uh, the other dwarf with the uh, the squid head uh, kind of says, we'll talk again later. I'll tell you some of my research to uh, Dudek. 
Oh, yes, yes, you do that. And as they walk away, Dudek sort of turns to you. I'll be leaving soon. Okay. <laughs> Interesting <laughs> story, and I've heard of creatures that match some description of what she said, but uh, they haven't been seen in a long time. And they don't tend to prey on the inside of mountainsides, for certain. That that did sound odd from what I, I, I overheard. Um, so, basically, I, I'm just trying to find somebody that... Uh, looks familiar uh but if he's wanting to leave i'll suggest that he does leave no and... it, it it's more not, oh. not the party dear i'm going to be leaving the area long before that woman can get after me again ah uh, uh I'll, I'll walk with him then all right um he's he's just kind of milling about they're probably probably the two of you would leave the main area just because it is getting a little crowded in there the band has been playing um well well they've been playing it hasn't really improved that much. Every once in a while, there's just a wrong note that seems to uh, that seems to uh, hit. Oh, that's it. That's it's what... very odd that this is the caliber of music that they're they're playing. Uh, that has bothered me this entire time. <laughs> I'm just gonna shuffle the people around. Aknarada and Oliver will be talking to the Baroness. Oh yes, uh, Squid Lady and Odega are gonna have a chat. Yes. Good. <laughs> uh, but meanwhile, Dudek uh, kind of uh, walks with you out. Strange party, I suppose, but as parties go. Oh, you're muted. Not what I expected for, for the type of event that was advertised. I'm not really sure what to expect. I've been to a number of formal parties in my time. But never a formal party in um, a place like Aelthwater. It's a rather unusual spot, don't you think? A little more earthborn than most of the highbrow parties I've been to, anyway. But I suppose it passes. That, that is fair. It's just the people that, that were chosen to come. Odd choices. Are they? I don't know most of them, and still don't know about half of them that well. Why are they odd choices to you? They're not people that you'd expect here. You wouldn't you wouldn't expect a blacksmith to be invited to a formal party. Hmm. Well, it all depends on what you hope to gain from the party, I suppose. The people you want to talk to. The people you need to talk to. If the Baron mm -hmm. and Baroness are trying to reestablish their power in this area, then I would imagine it's beholden on them to talk to the people who are actually doing things. Maybe they overshot with a fancy party. But that might be just their style, I suppose. Hmm. That's fair. It's just something that doesn't sit right with me. Hmm. And I can't quite put my finger on it. Well, uh, take that one over there. And he kind of gestures towards the through the door where you can just make out uh, the edge of uh, Odika's outfit. Mm -hmm. She clearly doesn't really understand why she's here i'm not sure who she is or what she does but uh, seems to be um not understanding the occasion maybe from what i've seen i've seen them who don't don't fit in i've seen uh the blacksmith uh and a few other people who i've seen around town who just aren't who I'd expect to be invited to a high-end event. Well, maybe overshot. Mm -hmm. Maybe trying to impress some of the people here. Maybe not be maybe. impressing all of them, but felt obligated to include a few. I was surprised to receive an invitation myself, but I suspect that's Maximus is doing. He likes to make that sure that those of us who work with him are uh, taken care of. And that makes sense, right? You, you guys are the, the main entertainment for, for an event that they're holding. That, that invitation makes sense. I mean... I've, I've, I've just been to enough of these type of events to know that this guest list makes no sense at all. You've been to enough of these events? I don't know where you've been to them, but 
I've attended a few of mine over time, but uh, nothing quite so intentionally attempting to be this fancy in a place that doesn't necessarily deserve it. So what sort of events have you attended, then? Oh. I'm from, I'm a, from a, a noble family in the capital, so I've been to quite a few different events. Oh, really? Uh, which family? And he starts to list them off. And you realize oh. he tracks politics pretty strongly. I have, a, I have one of my strongholds over in... I think it's New Hatton. I forget the name of it offhand. But one of the islands that's right there that's known for being uh, essentially the Elven University, uh, which is part of the cluster of islands around Alaria. That's a bit, is that where Verandale is from? Uh, it is where Verandale is from. Nice. Uh, I will give one of the names of a family that I'm related to. Okay. Like, uh, like a cousin that married out or something. Okay. Um, well, I'm not familiar with that uh, particular branch, but there are a number of rather esteemed ancient families that way. What the hell are you doing here? Uh, pardon my saying. Learning. Oh, and what are you learning? I'm a scholar of the world, and I'm not sure what I'm doing here either. Well, I wanted to find out what made a place tick, and I ended up learning how important it is to know what's going on. Well, that's, that's a good thing to know. He seems slightly distracted for a second, and he points towards the hallway. Make a perception check at disadvantage. Oh, that's decent. That's decent. Uh, that is a 12. Okay. Yes, 12. Um, you see him look towards the hallway. Nothing seems to be amiss. This one? Uh, nope, the hallway or you're beside. Um, okay. And he uh, he uh, turns to you kind of sharply. Did you see that? Something strange. I have a feeling there might be a few more things or people attending the party than are on the guest list. Hmm. Did I feel someone walk by in this square, in one of these two squares? Um, you had noticed someone, I think it was the other hallway uh, where you had, no, actually, sorry, you hadn't noticed someone, no, sorry. Back well, like when, when he when he's saying that, that he saw something move. Did I feel something in those two squares? You did not notice no. it. Um, oh, actually, right. Your blind sight. Uh, yeah. Yes. It felt as though the air shifted through that area. Okay. Uh, I would like to follow it. Okay. Um, make a perception check at disadvantage. Wouldn't blind sight mean that I, I can sense where they're going? If it's within 10 feet. Yes. So I can tell which direction they went, if they're going left or right. Um, so far as you know, from the spotting that you had, it's going effectively north. Okay. That is cocked. That is 10. Oh. There we go. Yeah, 10. 11. Okay. Um, you uh, follow it uh, a little bit of, of distance, but whatever it is, it's so subtle, you couldn't keep up to it. Um, you see no sign of it from the distance you are. As you come to that, that, uh, uh, that side corridor, kind of looking around, you notice that Sable is down that corridor, uh, and the door is closing, the far door that, at the end of that corridor. Let me move the map here. Everybody can see. It looks like somebody's gone out. And Sable is facing towards the door. Do 
you're you're muted sorry um i'm going to take a step to the side and like try to make myself not seen by sable and see what she does okay go ahead and make a stealth check Twenty-eight. Okay. Nice. Um, Sable comes to the end of the the hallway, or sort of turns around, comes to the end of the hallway, um, turns towards the center where Dudek is still kind of looking after, like what the down the hallway where you'd gone, um, kind of nods to him, and then heads uh, in. Doesn't seem to have noticed that you were standing there. She's acting weird. It's bothering me. And in fact, proceeds to step up the stairwell, heading to the second floor. Um, one last thing before you, uh, before we end the scene, move on to uh, Silas's last statement. I mean, not last statement, but <laughs> his plea or whatever happens at that moment. Um. Or is there anything, Annie, you want to do in particular? Otherwise, we'll bring that scene to a close. No, there's nothing in particular. Okay. I will say that you did you did kind of come back around the corner where Dudek is watching kind of both you and her, and you do see Sable disappear upstairs. Okay. Uh, now, back to Silas for the end of the, end of the day session. Uh, Silas is... Uh, oops, I've got her... <laughs> In the dark. He's in the dark. Yes. There we go. Um, as uh, the governess, as you're now taken to understand, is leading you down these narrow stairs. Okay. What do I see at the end of the stairs? Uh, what do you see? Yeah, um, like I there do is, I see. There is light coming from below. Uh, and you can actually hear um, some bustle going on down there as well. Uh, and you hear the, the strains of the music. Everything becomes a lot more like you're close to the first floor. Okay. Um, hmm. Are you resisting? Are you running? Are you just following along? Well, I think... Uh, uh, was the only locked door I couldn't get into. Um, okay. Silas is going to, he's going to move down the stairs, but a little slowly. So it's going to take a couple of rounds. Oh, uh, um, before we go further, I'd like you to make a perception check. Okay. Natural 20, 25. Hey, God, how many natural 20s today? That's amazing. Mm, um, I like that die. As Not that more me, except for that one misroll. <laughs> at the top of the stairs, before you start heading down, you happen to glance off to your left, and you can see this sort of wall that's there. But you notice there's a hinge in the wall. There's another secret door on the other side, which leads dirt deeper in. So I'll let you use that if you want okay. to. But Leads so, deeper in where? So um, you're not sure where exactly, but it's on this wall right here beside you. So you came in through a secret door on this side of the wall from the hallway, but this yeah. passageway has another secret door on the other side, which leads somewhere. You don't know where. Okay. But the governess is clearly expecting you to to uh, to follow her as she begins to descend the stairs. Okay. Um... Huh. Okay, Pat just got new information, and I was thinking. Yeah, sorry. Um, I meant to mention that before, but I forgot. No problem. Um, okay. Well, I, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna go with option uh, number two. Um, okay, as she's heading down, mm -hmm. um. He's going to use silent image to uh, uh, ahead of them to have 
from the shadows around the door, the shadows will seem to go thicker and start to move across the door as though there's some creepy black energy that's oozing in. Coming from which of the doors? The 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 door ahead of her. Okay. All right. Actually, no, make it the spot between us. All so right. it's not in a door, but it's in it's covering that hallway. Okay. Um she won't see and, it because it will be behind her. Yep. Yeah, uh he's gonna go. What's that? Um and actually it'll cover like a whole fifteen foot section of it. So it's like three squares. Uh, well, it can be a fifteen foot cube. The hallway is like three feet wide, so yeah. Okay. Well, it'll it covers the hallway wide, but a fifteen foot length of it. Okay. So it might start around her because it's actually got fairly large size. Okay. Uh, it looks like the shadows are coming alive and kind of reaching in and occluding the area. Um, uh, that is an intelligence save to see through that, or an intelligence yes. check. Intelli- uh I think, well, you can see through it with an investigation roll, I believe. Okay, so there's nothing initially. Some of the illusion ones have, if you see this initially, then you don't, you see through the illusion. Um, no, there's no save for it initially, just if you, uh, okay. basically, if you check it effectively, or if you encounter it uh, physically and you see no, something's not there. Um, okay, you hear her uh, turn around. Um and uh, exclaim loudly and with fear, uh, what is this? What's going on? Are you all right? What is this? And you can hear her kind of backing down the stairs a bit. Okay. Um, he's going to use minor illusion to add some, like, growly, creepy sounds to it coming from the middle of it. And, um, and he'll say, I, 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 don't, I don't know. What's, what's going on? So, uh, sorry, what was the first illusion spell? The first illusion spell is Silent Image. It's okay. the one that he can cast endlessly. Okay. Uh, covers a 15-foot area. It doesn't have it, any sound, is, but is it, it creates like... No. Silent Image is concentration. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, he doesn't have any other concentration spells up, so... Okay, but you're going to cast another spell. Yeah. But it's just a one action thing. It's not a concentration spell. Okay. All right. So then you're, uh, you're adding on a layer of sound to it. All right. Yeah. Just like not continuous sound, but a couple of sounds like snapping teeth, growling sounds, something creepy. Okay. Uh, uh, you can hear her cry out a lot more afraid from this. And you hear the sound of a door opening and her crying okay. into the hall out there. Um, can he see how to open this possible secret door next to him uh or does he just see that there's like an outline you can see the edge of 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 the the door and you can see where the hinges are they're they're visible on this side it would take a moment to search to see if you can find the trigger that opens it sure that's what he'll do okay uh investigation check uh meanwhile uh, 11 i think Okay, it's actually not hard to find. It just, just takes a, a moment to check for it. Yeah. Uh, because it's it's meant for yeah, probably it. servants yeah. to find, and it's really a foot yeah. switch. That's uh, what he was hoping for. Uh, and you press down on it. There's a clunk, and the, the thing starts to spin inwardly. He's, yeah, he's going to he's going to shriek as he steps on the button to hide any noise from the hinges, uh, and then duck the into that. I, okay, the sorry. hinges are are silent actually. Yeah, but um, he would he would do it just in case, mm-hmm. um, and then he's going to get in there as fast as he can and close it as quickly as he can, uh, and uh, yeah, just pretend that something just ate him. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I'm going to do a little revealing here just to get the space emptied. Uh, as a whole bunch of things happen at once here that I have to react to. So. Um, yep. Uh, first of all, you you push on through into the room. Uh, the the uh, what you realize is a bookcase moves aside quite readily and quite easily, uh, allowing you to step into the room. Uh, and it it kind of already has its balance to close behind you. Uh, oh crap! <laughs> you see a you see a very large room with uh, on the far end large green windows. 
there is a little bit of light in this room, but it's actually been dimmed. Uh, you can see that it's blocked off a little bit. It looks to be uh, a bookshelves with a wide variety of books on them and uh, scrolls and tomes, a whole bunch of things. Um, I will note a few other features of the room just so we have them. Uh, looks like there are plants that are planted in a number of different spots. There's also uh, two chairs. Uh, can you scroll the map down a bit? Oh, pardon me. Thank you very much. No problem. Who's Jordy? Uh, we'll, we'll get to him too. Oh. Uh, I want to set the room first before I tell you the people that are in there. Uh, you see uh, what looks like three large planters full of an abundance of plants. Two chairs, okay. uh, uh, sorry, two chairs here and here facing a table that lead out to this large thing that looks out towards the uh, back uh, the back of the house, essentially, uh, inward. A large table in the center of the room as well with a massive fancy rug on it. Uh, and slumped over to one side, you see the form of a dwarf. Uh, looks like they are twitching. No, actually not twitching, not moving at all. Uh, slump down as if suddenly and very stiff with their arms out. As you move around, you recognize this dwarf. Uh, it is Jordy, one of the loggers at the, I believe yeah. it's called the Rabbit Hollow Logging Camp. Great rage. Uh, he uh, seems he to be uh, turning gray and, in fact, not moving at all. Uh, and uh, you can hear just the barest whisper of breath. Uh, in one hand, he's holding on to uh, what looks like a book that he pulled from the shelf. And you can see that there was launched from behind the book some sort of dart, which is now sticking into his upper arm. Um, in the stairs, so that's the, the things that you see. Uh, downstairs, okay. there is a hue and cry, um, which I th think... None of you are in quite the right position. Actually, Annie is in the right position to hear it. Uh, as from over on one side of the room, the far side, beyond where the uh, cloakroom actually is, um, you hear the, the, the uh, loud and uh, frightened cry of a woman uh, crying out, There are shadows moving and something behind me. Quickly! Fetch the guards. And there's a bit of commotion there. Uh, as they actually close up the front openings of the uh, cloakroom that's right there. And you see coming through uh, to the front doors, the guard captain has been standing outside, uh, runs over to the right-hand side of the space, uh, over and disappears behind the, the uh, hallway. You do not see him reappear on the other side either. Uh, the commotion uh, quickly stifled from within that space, uh, but you distinctly heard someone uh, something yelling just a moment ago. So that's why wow, that's going to kick off. Uh, inside the room where Medric... The library? Uh, in the library where you've been uh, here... Uh, the Baron is uh, sort of quickly introducing everybody, and he seems to know exactly who everybody in the room is. Uh, even with the masks on, uh, he is he's introducing. In fact, uh, at this point, he takes his own mask off. Um, I know that things have been unusual for a while, so I wanted to reach out to a number of the different people and smaller groups to be able to extend my thanks for the works that you've been doing and the continued work to making this area better. Yeah, it has been a very trying time for myself and my wife with her illness, but I am thankful for the healing we've been able to find. And I hope the healing between the businesses, and he starts to, to get into what, you know, in a modern term we think of as a sales pitch, essentially, to try to make sure that all the businesses are comfortable, that all the people are comfortable, Athanos is not distinctly uncomfortable. He has no idea why he's there. He's not a politics person at all, and he just sort of looks... He just sort of tries to sink into the corner and seems to observe all of this. Uh, whereas Medrick most... is, is not a politics people, but he knows that the politics people are, like, the ones that push the war people, so he's well, trying to pay attention. To, to Medrick, <laughs> there is something of a rallying speech that would be given by a captain to the soldiers, to remind them that there is work to be done, to thank them for the work they get to do, and that there's there's some ask that he's leading up to. 
Before he's able to lead up to that ask, there's a knock on the door, and the guard captain opens up the door. Um, kind of yes. looks around, ap- apologetic, uh, but looks directly at the at the Baron. I'm sorry, sir. There's something I have to take care of. Uh, you'd all be safest probably just to stay in the room until it's settled. I'm sure it's nothing more than a loose squirrel or something. And kind of turns, closes the door, and you hear the sound of it locking behind him. Um, it's no fair that when they go into hidden places, you can still see their name tag hanging low. <laughs> That's just not right. <laughs> But he and does, Magritte just gives a big sigh and it's like, oh, who the fuck is this beginning? I'm sure it's nothing to be worried about. Uh, my uh, my man, uh, Gordon, is very efficient. I'm sure it's nothing more than a loose animal. Hopefully. Of course. Now, where was uh, I? And that's where... Uh, yep. One more thing. Was he, was he like, c- continuing his speech right away? Or? He looks like he was trying to get back to it, yeah. Okay, I'll I'll let him continue then. Okay, but that's where we'll call it for the night. Uh, we've gone a little bit later, but we've also lost an hour, uh, both in technical problems and because the time changed, and all of us are in off two by hours. An hour. So there we go. Uh, but that's it for tonight. Uh, thanks very much to my players for for putting up through the technical problems. Uh, <laughs> I hope I was able to keep each of you going. Uh, it, you were. It, it's not only naturally split into three, but I also ended up splitting some of it into three myself. So go figure. Um, Wait, uh, you did this got, to yourself by a break. Never got good. Um, yeah, no, I've got this reset. Remember, so uh, we will be uh, 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 back again in two weeks. Uh, and remember, if you're checking this out live, you can catch the full episode on uh, YouTube.com/slash ENCAF1. Look for the Legends of the Drowned Isles Campaign Two uh, playlist. You can also find us live every other Sunday at 3 o'clock Atlantic Daylight Time. I think that's the right time zone now uh, on Sunday afternoons. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. And remember, you can go to the Facebook as well. I suppose all the end credits say all this, but I like to say it out loud. Uh, thanks once again to my players. And uh, we shall see you all in this strange house as the party continues in every for possible way. <laughs>